Hello, the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris is starting a nine-day visit to Africa in Ghana. From Ghana, she will travel to Tanzania and Zambia. Vice President's visit is part of the U.S. effort to compete with other global powers in Africa, especially China and Russia. During her visit, she plans to strengthen economic ties with the continent. This is taking place in a continent that is currently dominated by Chinese investments. The struggle for Africa's natural resources has remained the primary attraction of global powers for centuries. The challenge the U.S. is facing is that unlike the U.S., its main competitor, China, does not get involved in the internal affairs of the countries where they invest. It is 5.30 p.m. in Lagos, Nigeria, 10.30 a.m. in New York City, 6.30 p.m. in Johannesburg, South Africa, and 8.30 p.m. in Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of Congo. Wherever in the world you're watching us, welcome to another episode of 90 Minutes Africa. My name is Rudolf Okonpo. My co-host, Chido Onoma, is on assignment. On our show today, is People's Gazette Samuel Ogundi'e. Samuel will tell us the stories behind the visit of Nigeria's Chief Justice Olukayede Ariwola to London, which People's Gazette broke. He will also take your questions about the media in Nigeria. So please join us as we welcome to the show Samuel Ogundi'e. Samuel. Samuel, welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, the other technique oh, okay. <laughs> disconnected. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Doctor, for having me. Yeah, it's nice it's to, a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for making time. I know you are very busy. Uh, this The job of a reporter doesn't end. There's no weekend. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> All right, let, let, right, let's start with, from the beginning. Um, the, the story that we just told about Cam uh, Harris, the Vice President of the United States, coming to Africa. Why is she not uh, coming to Nigeria? Do you know? Um, I'm afraid uh, no public um, disclosures uh, were made you know, um, around why she would be visiting Nigeria. Um, but of course, it's um, it, it, it's it's not um, um, inspiring any confidence, you know, about the Nigeria's uh, place in Africa. If you know someone like um, the Vice President of the United States is visiting the continent, um, and uh, Nigeria is not on the list, I mean, you know, there there usually is a way that um, you want to. If you are going to Asia, you know, you know that you must have India in mind. You know, <laughs> you know that, that's like the credo. Right, and if you if you are coming to Africa, uh, Nigeria almost always should should be the the priority. But but of recent we've seen, um, since following up, I mean after Abbasanjo, you know George Bush was in Nigeria about twice under Abbasanjo um, for different meetings. Um, but under uh, since you know um, uh, Abbasanjo left office, we've been seeing. Um, you know, U.S. presidents not not prioritizing Nigeria. Obama was was in Ghana. Um, I mean, he spent eight years in office and visited Africa about two or three times or something. And I'm sure, I'm surprised that he never visited uh, Nigeria. You know, not even once. It's it, 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 it doesn't you know it doesn't inspire uh, confidence. I'm not saying that the other countries they are visiting is not is bad. The other, they should they are still part of Africa, but um, Nigeria just has a place that, you know, um, everybody uh, envies, you know, on the continent. And we thought that we should, we should just have it. Other than that, I don't know why um, Kamala is not uh, visiting Nigeria, but I'm sure that um, the vice president's team um, must have, you know, put a lot of things into consideration in picking um, the countries that um, were eventually selected, you know, for the trip. And then the, the other issue that, um the president elect their team, uh, the team of the president elect, they'll be making an issue of that is um, Biden 
not sending any message of uh, congratulation to to the president elect what is what is the issue with that oh, oh well um it's 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 that's that may be you know different right from the uh, uh, vice president um, Kamala Harris' um, um, trip, you know, in selecting countries. But the, the, the one on the, um, the president elect, Latino, we don't really know specifically about from the fillers. It seems like um, in diplomatic uh, um, circles, you know, they are trying to say that it seems like a Tinubu's matter, we have not seen the end, you know, of it. So many countries are being reluctant, you know, um, to quickly congratulate. Um, Tinubu, not necessarily um, because of you know um, his his um, reputation, um, but also uh, because they are seeing legal challenge, you know, that may be potent. You know, they also analyze they know Nigerian law, they analyze things, you know. But um, the story that we did was that the Vice President Biden, unlike you know previous American presidents, um, did not uh, congratulate you know uh, um, the, the President elect of Tinubu, and um, you know, when we gave instances in which they congratulated previous uh, presidents, you know, um, in our country, but why? Why is this different? Um, then the president elect team, you know, started, you know, trying to fact check and do all sort of, you know, uh, nonsense in the media <laughs> that uh, the U.S. congratulated um, um, Balatinubu, you know, on his um, election uh, the, or declaration as a president. But that's different from the president's office, the White House. You know, issuing a congratulatory message. You know, the State Department is like the foreign, you know, the foreign office. Of course, the State Department must have taken its decision. You know, with the support, um, either uh, you know, it's almost default actually. You know, the, the Secretary of State um, could, you know, just feel like, look, it, it's uh, it, it, by default. You know, um, let's just any any new president anywhere in the world, as long as um, it's it's a country with diplomatic ties to the United States. You know, they. They, they will issue automatic congratulatory message, you know. But there are, there's another layer, you know, which is the president of, of, of that country, you know, actually coming out to publicly also endorse and congratulate, you know, the winner of our election and say, look, we look forward um, to either visiting your country, uh, welcoming you to the, to the White House in Washington and all that, you know, to strengthen bilateral um, relations and all that. We didn't see that. Uh, uh, in the context, you know, of Bolatinibu, and it's quite um, um, frightening because Nigeria is, um, a, a, you know, at the cradle of Africa. You know, how could the president emerge? I mean, when um, Ruto emerged in Kenya, you know, the 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 you know, the, there was a statement, you know, congratulating him and all that. So why should Nigerian president um, elect be not, you know? Um, so so it's it's really really um, disconcerting, you know. For, for people who um, care about the place of uh, Nigeria um, on the continent, at least. All right. Uh, let, let's look at some of the headlines in today's newspapers. Uh, one of them is the death of uh, Oladi Odia. Um, what do we know about, about him since um, he left office as uh, at Bacha's um, a deputy? Um, you know, in the Diaz um, situation for the family, we condole you know his um, family at this you know in this moment. Of course, he 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 was uh, pretty much a uh, senior citizen um, before his passing overnight, um, and we, we condole with the family. Um, however, you know we, we could we could take a, you know more like a cautionary tale, you know from from his life and then the, the last days. You know, um, how was he you know, during his days in the military? You know, and then how did he end up? You know, it's, it's more like a cautionary tale. You know, from my perspective, you know, um, it could have been you know better celebrated. You know, um, following his passing and and even before he, he died, but he became unfortunately due to his um, role in you know, in the Abacha and even preceding um, hunters. You know. Before Abacha, you know, but specifically Abacha um, and all that. So he, he left office not so, um, he left power, he left, you know, the corridors of power, um, not so celebrated. Um, but ultimately, um, he, he, while he didn't um, 
in his early receive any accolades following after leaving office. Um, he, he tried as much as he could also to stay away from controversies you know, in, in the public, you know, even though as, as a former um, general. So I think that played to his credit, you know, in allowing, um, you know, successive administrations uh, under the civil rule, you know, to, to do things without, you know, it's not every day that you see the uh, coming out to criticize anybody or, you know, commenting on necessarily about issues and all that. So he carried himself well. Um, in that light. But the point is, when he was in power, how did he handle power, you know, uh, as the um, chief of um, staff or the uh, uh, chief of general staff, you know, which was chief of staff, supreme headquarters, you know, how did he handle things? But um, ultimately, maybe people will learn one or two things from his life and now after life. Now, the, the other story in the news uh, was um, the DSS issuing threats essentially mm -hmm. to everybody saying that there are people plotting to destabilize the country and that um that they are ready to to make sure that that doesn't happen do you what do you know about this oh, oh well um as far as i'm concerned you know uh, with due respect to the fact that the sss is an established um constitutional body you know in the federal republic of nigeria um you know our prime um, domestic intelligence office, um, but, but you know, it's just not, you know, it's no longer what it used um, to be. You know, the, the, the SSS has become, you know, something else. Issuing statements like if you are in a fascist state, you know, as if, you know, you are talking about under Mussolini or, um, you know, or the former Lenin or something, you know, it, it doesn't know Hitler, it doesn't even, it, it, the statements are really, to me, you know, the statements are too pedestrian, you know, for, for to be coming from an institution, a domestic intelligence institution saying, oh, we are monitoring those who are, who are, who are commenting on social media, we are monitoring you, and that uh, anybody who has any issue, you know, with the, with the way the election turned out um, should go to court, you know, and people are already in court. So why should people be commenting about the issues that are already in court in the public? You know, it, it, it's, it's reeks of, um, of, of, an, of an organization, I'm afraid, you know, that has lost, you know, its uh, its um, its core, uh, 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 you know, uh, basis for, for for existence, you know, in Nigeria. You know, SSS is supposed to be a big book. If you see a statement from the SSS, which will be extremely rare, if you see it ordinarily, if you see, it, you know, you know very well that everything is broad based. You know, it's professional. It is necessary, absolutely necessary for that statement to come out. You know, but that's not what we have. We now have, you know, partisan individuals in charge of domestic intelligence office. We, they don't even focus on that. They are in the pockets of politicians, you know, and, and, and it is unfortunate. It's unfortunate that, you know, this is what we have. You know, there's a lot going wrong in the country, security-wise, you know, that the SSS is supposed to be focused on. But unfortunately, it's, it, you know, its budget is booted. You know, it's so, it's so whatever it even has to actually carry out anything, probably maybe enough to pay salaries of workers. So the, the agency has been reduced, you know, to be to be a partisan, you know, a pedestrian organization being used in that manner. So, but of course, Nigerians, Nigerians don't take the SSS seriously. And even the SSS knows that it's not taken seriously by Nigerians. So, so that's why they just keep doing what they are doing to also get some engagement now that they're on Twitter, so that they will get followers. You know, to see whether their spokesman will get followers, and you know, and also see whether you know how to brag about their presence. You know, they, they, they are not creating fear in any Nigeria. <laughs> you know, they are not. You know, and that's that's to tell you how sad um, things have become. Nigerians are the Nigerians are they are just going there and even insulting them because they know that they are not capable of anything really. Now, now, if you look at the statement they issued, I think today or yesterday, and that of uh, Festus Kiyamo. Uh, it, it sounded similar when Festus was writing them to say they should go and arrest Peter B. Um, what do you think about that? One of the common thing, things they mentioned was the issue of fake news, and, and they, they, they said they are going to crack down on, on fake news. When you hear that, what do you hear? Uh, well, <laughs> quite frankly, like I said, um, the SSS and, you know, um, um, the APC, the, you know, people in power right now, or even PDP, 
you know, it depends on which states, you know, or, or, or what influence, you know, you have, you know, and how much, how deep your pocket is. You know, SSS is easily influenced by anybody, you know, in the country with, with, with some, 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 you know, resources to deploy, you know. Um, it, so SSS um, and, uh, you know, statements seeming to equal uh, Festus Kayamo is, is hardly surprising. Um, they are not going to go after Festus Kayamo. You know, Festus Kayamo is all over there, you know, distributing false fake news, you know, making false, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, um, how do I, statements that will inflame the quality. You know, that's what we are seeing, you know, with, with, with Festus. But if, the SSS is not going to say anything because the SSS knows, you know, very well its own boundaries, you know. And it's the same thing that you use. The same thing is if you go to the, the section of the, the government of the day, you know, um, you see a lot of fabricated information, you know, being circulated in their own portal around their own conversation, you know, and, and that's what you see. You see this typical one from the from, from Kayamo, in which he was you know accusing labor of rigging so that you can't say, oh, it was only a PC that did. And maybe you labor also rigged. That's what they are trying to say here. Right, yeah. and then that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you say, and this, what is not what is you know, this is pure propaganda using false information to debamboozle the public, you know. But, but the fact that this was this has been called out and they did not take it down, he did not take it down. Yeah. Take it down. yeah, yeah, that's to tell you that's to tell you how much he doesn't care, you know? and nothing, nothing is happening there in terms of the SS, DSS that is um talking about fake news, uh, didn't do anything also. We have this from Bayo, um, Bayo Nanoga, who um, is also um, threatening uh, people with. Um, let me let me show you his uh, his Facebook, uh, you know, Twitter Twitter page, and you see certain things that he tweets. And I want to know if you think this is this is something you expect from someone who works uh, very closely with uh, the president elect. This is this is uh, bio. I don't know if you can see this or uh, the viewers can see this. Okay, this is bio's uh, face uh, Twitter page, and and basically calling uh, people all the all those sons of bitches tweeting the hashtag Tinubu the drug dealer. Uh, your days are numbered. Now, when you see this, what do you think about the possible government of um, Bola Tinubu and what it will mean for, for Nigerians, especially those in the media, social media, and all those? I mean, look, it, it, it's, it's, uh, we expect it to be rather uh, chilling, you know, um, when these um, people come fully uh, power by, you know, in another two months thereabouts, because, they know, they understand very well the power of the media. Bayo Nonoga, Bola Tinobu, you know, these are the people who who led, you know, serious media, you know, uh, onslaught against the Abacha era. Don't forget, you know, using their, uh, you know, different publications out of Lagos, you know, and that's what people are saying today about uh, Bayo Nonoga. That ah, you were you were very very much in, involved in the whole, you know, for democracy. Um, campaign media roles and every other thing at the time. So how did you, how did you get here, right? So these people understand what it means to crack down the power of the media and not just to crack down and how to do it, you know. And they've been so far you can see them, you know, insulting Buhari, saying that oh, Buhari does not know how to use power, you know. That as soon as they come to power, they've been they've been tweeting it, you know. People like you know by all people like all oh, their supporters on social media, you know, they and their enforcers being there. Uh, and some of these other people. They've been tweeting that, you know, Buhari, yeah, Tinobu is not going to be like Buhari in the, in the area of uh, handling media because they know that, they know the damage that the media can be used to do because they have done it before. You know, they've been there, you know, <laughs> so they've done it well. So they know very well what it means and then they are not going to allow it. So they know how to handle. They know the insidious, you know, uh, plot, you know, to make, to make sure that um, the media, so it's, it can be very, very chilling how far they are going to go, you know, to make sure that they dominate the conversation. Now, Samuel, look at this, this tweet. This was on March 21st. It says that P2B of Labour Party seeks the annulment of the election of President-elect Bola Tinubu, just like the military annulled MKO Abiola's uh, election of 2000, 
of 12th June to 1993. So how did can can you explain this to viewers? There's no there's no no there's no there's no correlation. Um, it's just trying to whip up you know um, sentiments you know around the fact that you know, election is going to be an annulment you know because they are not confident right about what may happen you know um, as, the, as the case you know goes through the tribunal um, stages. So that's probably why you are seeing you know um, you know things like this being being, being talked about. You know they are they are, they are projecting. Bola Tinubu as, you know, uh, Moshida Biola, and as such, you know, anything to truncate his election, even if it's, you know, constitutionally uh, um, appropriate, you know, and uh, by, you know, it's through the Supreme Court and everything, they will still see that as an omen. They will say, oh, they didn't allow Biola to get there. And so they, they you know, they didn't allow Lugula to get there. And so Bola Tinubu is also suffering the same thing. You know, even though the contexts, you know, are quite different. I will never contest the election, he lost. You know, um, up to the Supreme Court. You know, um, Abiola contested the election. He won. He was he was truncated by the military. You know, he was annulled by fear, the military fear. You know, but it's it's different in the context of this. Uh, Bola Tinubu uh, contested the election. Um, he was declared winner, and you know, the court intervened. You know, through the judicial process, and the court has the final say. So the contexts are quite different. You know, there, there is no basis for comparison when you look at this uh, issues. But of course, they just need to rally their base and they don't need facts, they don't need context, they don't need anything, you know, they can strip anything of any any context just to put projects, whatever they want to put out there. You know, so they are, most of these things, they are not really necessarily doing it to uh, those who are not Tinubu supporters. They are doing these things just for Tinubu supporters who will take anything that they put out at face value. All right. Uh, for our viewers, I just want them to know that in another 30-something minutes, we let them join us and have a conversation with someone. Uh, let's look at this one. This one was um, uh, just uh, the day, I think, uh, March 18th. Um, he wrote, that's bio, that late 2023 be the last time of Igbo interference in Lagos politics. Let there be no repeat in 2027. Lagos, like Anambra, Imo, and any states, any Nigerian state, it is no, it's not no man's land, not federal capital territory. It is Yoruba, uh, Yoruba it is Yoruba land. Mind your business. So um, this is somebody who, uh, as a young reporter, you showed, um, they, are the, they are the veterans of, of, of the industry and, and young reporters, I was too a young reporter and I used to uh, read the news um, when they started the news, him and his friends. And you have, um, you have respect for people like that. To see him um, writing this stuff like this, um, how do you feel about that? Can you hear me somehow? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? You said, "How do I feel about what?" About about seeing this tweet that he sent out on March March 18th, where he was saying, "Did you hear what I read it out that let 2023 be the last time the Igbo interference in uh, in Lagos politics? Let there be no repeat in 2027. Lagos is like Anambra, Imo, uh, any Nigerian state. It is not no man's land or federal uh, capital territory. It is Yoruba land." mind your business. When you read something like this from someone who should be an elder, a, a veteran of your industry, well, how do you feel about that? Well, I mean, Bayo's um, situation is um, particularly, you know, um, we do respect to him, you know, um, unfortunate because he's, an, you know, he's a senior citizen, you know, he's in about 65 and thereabouts. Um, so he's not somebody that I want to um, really cast a special on his character. Um, not by virtue of the fact that he was, you know, um, a journalist as well, but um, that, you know, he's a senior citizen, you know, and one has to be, uh, you know, I mean, uh, minimal in how much you go. Uh, you can only pity the situation other than that. You can only pity the man's uh, situation. What happened to him? Um, nobody, nobody really knows, you know, what's, what's going on, you know. So when you see something like this, the only way you could, you know, it's to offer your sympathy, you know, that's all. 
because otherwise you just end up find yourself um you know um stooping to his level you know for what he has decided to do to himself why he would do this i don't know what is worth you know uh, by an onoga um doing this to himself uh, and and his family you know you have to have a family and there's a way you do things you know in a manner that will just extend the legacy you know to to to, to, your, to your immediate family uh, members you know uh, but when he has added to go down this road um nigerians should offer you know uh prayers you know to to to, to, to buy up, um just so that um you know something may happen you know otherwise his position is not necessarily as bad as as as, as we are reading what by said you know as as untenable you know that to, to even think of what he said is, is bad enough to even think of it you know much less actually putting it out there in the public at the time that you have you know um, um foreign diplomats saying that look you i mean there is i mean i would be surprised to see by your you know, uh, uh, you know, somewhere in in the West, like the UK or or in the US, you know, anytime soon. Given what he had, you know, probably probably he knows that he's been he's been banned. Maybe he knows that he's no longer going to be able to enter the United States. So he's just doubling banned. You know, I mean, there's no point. So I I should just be saying whatever I wanted to say. He banned me anyway because of what I've said. You know, so because if not, I don't see him being able to enter those countries. Um, because we have clearly incited violence. Right, he has done it clearly. So there is no way, um, you know, unless he's able to appeal for whatever reasons, and then he, you know, maybe maybe he will be forgiven later on. But what he has done, I think, qualifies. And even in the diplomatic circle, they are talking about how disturbing it is. And if they tell you that what he did is disturbing, <laughs> you know, it means that they've taken action on their own part without necessarily uh, coming out to, to 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 say it, you know, and all that. Um, but his boy's position, like I said, is not necessarily unique. As bad as it is, let's pay attention. You know, the Tinubu's wife, who is about the closest person to him alive, right? Um, you know, she has uttered even worse, you know, um, anti legal uh, um, diatribe in the past. So we have to also contextualize that. So if Bayo is talking this way, um, Tinubu's wife cannot stand the ego. You know, imagine what Tinubu is, how Tinubu feels about, about the ego. You understand? So if, you know, by now, this man should not, there should have been a, a, an official statement, but he's still the one running the Tinubu media, uh, coordinating the entire media, Tinubu media structure. That is how disturbing this is. By now, this man should have been, he, he should have been, become a pariah, you know? He should not be seen, you know, in company of decent people in the society. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, Bayo Nonunga should not be seen in company of decent people, given what he has put up. But because he said it on behalf of, you know, somebody that himself, you know, his position is clear, you know, he didn't, he, has, he doesn't, they don't, they, this guy, is, you know, just like the president, you know, current president, they are not hiding the fact that, look, uh, they, 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 they want ethnic uh, supremacy. You know, they are for ethnic supremacy. They are not hiding it. And, and I hope that, you know, is able to correct that impression. Because no matter how you look at it, the way we are going, it doesn't seem like the Supreme Court is going to um, issue uh, anything, you know, before Tinubu is sworn in in two months. So therefore, we all have to be prepared, you know, uh, for for for, for Tinubu's uh, presidency. And if that's the case, then we expect Tinubu to carry himself as a leader of Nigeria. You cannot carry yourself as a leader of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and your chief spokesman. Your chief spokesman, your literal face, you know, in the public is saying things like this without any action whatsoever from you. You know, without, uh, you know, in some cases, if, 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 if Bayon knew that Tinubu will, will not tolerate this, he won't say. So saying this in the public is because he knows very well that he is not saying anything contrary to the position of his principal. That's now, the only way. That's, that's interesting I, I look at it, yeah. Uh, now, now look at this way, uh, the DSS, forget about Tinubu, maybe Tinubu is in, uh, in alliance with um, uh, Bayon, and we don't even want to talk about Femi Fanny Caridan, what that one is saying. But uh, what about the DSS trying to 
uh, plea that was trying to um, basically threaten people, saying we want people to behave well and don't divide the country. But they are not saying anything to these uh, actors like um, like Bayo or uh, even MC Olomo Olomo. What do you think about him and, and the fact that they are about, you know, talking about dealing with people, but they didn't um, mention anybody like that, people like this in, in their statements? Yeah, I mean, again, I, you know, we've spoken about the SSS and what the SSS has become. So, you know, it's just going to be a repetition of what I previously said. Um, so, uh, the SSS is not your typical country-first institution. You know, when you are the state security service, your name is clear. State security. You are for the state. You are for the nation. You are not an individual security service. But what we have seen is an SSS that has no, you know, it, it, it's not, you know, it's, SSS is suffering from the same thing that many, many students in Nigeria, you know, are suffering, you know, which is basically lack of competence and lack of, you know, um, institutional backing. That, look, we are an institution. All of us would rather resign than allow our offices to be used as a tool for political partisanship. We've gotten, uh, you know, we've gotten to a certain level in our lives, you know, as directors in the SSS, that we will not take orders, a partisan order from, from, from politicians, you know, we won't. So we have to stay above board, but that's not what we are seeing. So when you see them ignoring uh, Uluamo, ignoring versus Kayamo or Bayo Nonunga, all the hordes of, you know, APC and, you know, uh, Tinobu Buhari, uh, uh, um, you know, enforcers, you know, who are extremely divisive, you know, very, very, you know, you know, very ruthless, you know, online and all that. It's just simply because they are telling you that we can't go after these people by virtue of who they are loyal to. And it is, it, Nigerians can see it easily. Nigerians can see, and that's why I said that nobody, no, no, no Nigerian takes the SSS seriously when it comes to that. You know, because the, the SSS is invariably saying, look, we are helpless in this situation. You know, we don't want this. We are, we are against it. They can be saying that publicly. We are against it. But, you know, we won't be able to go after those who are actually doing it from that side. But we, we, you, you, they are condemning their action. They can see the actors, but they cannot go after them because they don't have, you know, the strength, what it takes. Nobody wants to lose his job. There's a director cannot risk his career to say, look, I need to publicly condemn, issue a statement from the SSS, condemning, calling out Francisco Yamo, calling out, you know, we allow, we allow um, um, free speech in our country. But these people, what they are now saying, you know, has gone be even on that, this is violence. This is outright demand, outright call to violence. That these people are doing, you know, which is a which is a way. There's no sensible human alive to be who will tell you that you know uh, um, you, you should be allowed to call for violence in a country in society. No, not even journalists like us. We won't be part of calling for you know allowing people to to publicly you know use violence, right? In the manner that those people are doing. So the SSS cannot. If the SSS publicly names those who are committing violence, you know, on the part of uh, uh, APC, on the part of PDP, on the part of Labour, on the part of NNPP or whatever political party. You know, as long as you do it in a balanced manner, you have no issue. But what they will do is to go and secretly carry members of the opposition, arrest them, you know, force them to make, you know, confessional videos, force them to do this, to try and, uh, you know, intimidate them, you know, debase them, in, uh, no matter how they want to do while leaving the actual, the big actors who have big platforms to incite violence just because they are basically on the path of the government of the day. That's basically, the press, Tinobu is, I mean, you know, almost, I mean, because it's going to be everything that the government will be doing right now, everything is going to be tailored with what of Tinobu wants. Every agency of government right now is no longer thinking about Buhari, how he's president. No, it is what does Tinubu want? They are deploying themselves towards Tinubu, you know, towards Tinubu's vision and everything. So they expect Tinubu to take office, right? And then they expect to be able to justify 
the fact that their own agenda, what they've been pushing in different ministries, in different agencies and all that, that everything is in line with Tinubu's own agenda. That's what they are doing now. They don't care about Buhari anymore. Buhari is as good as gone. Now, um, there's a story about the DSS and, and the military and, and Godwin Emefele, the central bank governor. Um, what most people don't understand uh, what happened there. What really happened? How could the DSS be looking for the central bank governor to arrest, um, demanding for his arrest, and then the military providing security for the central bank governor? What, what actually happened for those uh, viewers who have been reading these stories and do not understand what happened there. What what, what happened? Oh, well, I mean, basically, it's just the SSS feeling like, look, um, this guy has done something wrong. Um, fundamentally, he, he went after um, uh, the Constitution, right, because he was involved in terrorism, which is illegal in Nigeria, right? He was involved, you know, financing terrorism is terrorism, right? So... He, he did this, he did that. These are extremely grave charges, right? But because of how it came, that it came from the SSS through a section of the APC, right? That was more, seemed to be more loyal to Tinobu and not directly from the Buhari or you know, not Buhari's agenda, you know? And the entire Naira notes, because they saw everything as being against Tinobu. So they were trying to quickly do that. But the Buhari side, which is still in office, which still has powers as of today to fire anybody at the SSS, you know, had to rein them in. So Buhari was initially looking, but Buhari's people had to come in to say, look, if you try this, we'll go and announce your dismissal from office. So they had to threaten the SSS and make the SSS cool down. So people reported this was, you know, some reporters looking, looking into this matter. And you know they were able to get some information out of, of, of this to say, look, the SSS, um, um, the chief of uh, uh, army staff uh, or chief of defense staff or something provided security to uh, um, Irabo. You know, um, he provided security to uh, MFA when he came in military security, right? So and then the SSS did not want to confront the military. The military is under the commander in chief, and so is the SSS. So that was something like that coming is just rather unfortunate, you know. Uh, but basically, Nigerians should know that there was a serious power play then. Um, now we don't, we don't, we are not seeing that because we already had a president now. So we, if, if, if really MFA is to be arrested, I think they will pick him up. But probably because Tinubu does not have his time now, Tinubu is expecting MFA um, to know his position, right? <laughs> to know he knows, he knows his. Uh, 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 own, he knows his place now, so he will know how to find himself, how to find his way when, when the time comes. So Tinubu does not no longer no, no longer cares about anything like that. Mm. All right, this is um, this is the picture that started it all. Um, this is the picture of the Chief Justice uh, of uh, Nigeria. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. Um, what can you tell us about this story? That's why everybody, that's why we have you here today and uh, everybody is interested in hearing from you. How did you hear about this and whatever you can reveal? I don't want you to reveal your sources, but anything you can reveal, tell us the story behind this. Oh, well, um, the, the, the story is just, um, um, we got the story through you know, similar means of getting stories, right? We are in this organization, and um, every now and then we have, um, you know, strong sources who are in strong position, and then they feel like um, they have enough information to disclose about a matter. Sometimes they are conflicted, you know. Sometimes they just, you know, they don't. They they, they want to be loyal, you know, to the principal or to you know, just want to be loyal. They don't want to rock the boat. But sometimes they see things you know, that are just too, too bad for the country, right? And rather than keep quiet, they try as much as they could, you know, to say something about it. Um, the Chief Justice of Nigeria was, um, you know, days before um, we reported the story on, um, on, on the 20, uh, 23rd, which was, I would imagine, Thursday or something. We initially had two days earlier, 
somebody, you know, tipped us off. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, strong, top person at the Supreme Court tipped us off and said, look, this is a judicial, another judiciary matter has happened. That was how even the person put it, another, because the person, you know, and yeah, uh, supplied, you know, information to us before that we published before. Don't forget, in 2020, we reported that the Chief Justice Tanko was in Dubai receiving health, you know, medical treatments and all that. He was not able to function. That was in 2020, in December. And he remained in office until last year when our sources again at the Supreme Court sent information that, look, judges, ju associate justices were protesting and that they, they had even written a scathing um, um, petition against the CJM, you know, demand, basically calling him a corrupt, you know, incompetent uh, 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 um, chief justice. And they were saying that they wanted to demand his resignation for him to leave office. When we got the documents and we reported the story, the initial reaction everywhere was that this cannot be true. There were that there was no way associate justices that who were seeing the Supreme Court, I mean the CJN every day. So why wouldn't they just communicate with them verbally? Other than putting, there was no way they could they could have written a memo, you know, attacking the, the chief justice in the manner, the memo that we cited, calling it fake. Some editors were all, you know, reaching our newsroom and trying to ask us, how could this be? This has never happened. We said, look, we are confident about our story. So if the Supreme Court wants to issue a statement that it is not true, the Supreme Court may go ahead to issue a statement that it's not true, right? So, but how we got it from the Supreme Court? So days later, the Chief Justice issued a statement, you know, acknowledging the, the concerns of, you know, other judges, just as we reported, and then stepping down from office, saying that he was resigning because of his health. No, it was because we blew the story, and it was no longer something that could be contained within the Supreme Court. So the Chief Justice had to resign. That was how he resigned. We reported since 2020 that he was ill. He, was, he spent weeks in Dubai. He didn't resign then. When the illness locked him down in Dubai, he didn't resign then. You know, but it was two years, over two years later, when judges, justices wrote, you know, complaining about his corruption, you know, within themselves. And they all the justices that signed the letter and every the letter has made everything public. So it was no longer something that could be contained within the Supreme Court. So the Chief Justice felt like it was right about time for him to bow out. And that was how he bowed out of our story. So we, we have very strong sources inside the Supreme Court, which is what every media, any serious media organization should be able to do once you have the capacity. So we have our sources again coming to tell us that the Supreme Court, the uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria, this time around, um, Kada Iwola, has been in London. Evidence that he was in London was provided. How he left Nigeria, we got the information. So after we received our information from the sources, we, you know, we because when we, we, we when we look at, I mean, because this is these are sources that we previously vetted, so we knew the capacity of the, the, the sources. When we now got this latest one, we still that's why the fact that these were sources that are highly confidential. I mean, um, trusted rather and um, properly vetted previously. We still had to ask additional questions. Those questions were answered. You know, and then afterwards, we decided to reach the Supreme Court. For two days, we were contacting Sergio Ye of the National Judicial Council and Festus Festus Akwadi of the Supreme Court. Those are the two spokespersons. Any media organization anywhere in the world, if you have a story about an institution, you contact the, the spokesperson for that institution. The spokesperson's role is to interface with the media, you know, to put, a, well, if there's any information that's about to go out, the person has been contacted, the person will then go and make findings, come back, 
to the reporter and say, okay, this is our position on this particular matter. For two days, we tried to get the Supreme Court to tell us what was the Chief Justice doing in London? What was it doing there? The court has been in recess. I mean, I'm sorry, the court has been in session, not in recess, the court has been in session. So why would the Chief Justice just leave Nigeria quietly? Who did he tell? He didn't tell anybody now. This is the Chief Justice. In any serious country, movements of not even the Chief Justice, judges, you know, judges are publicly filed. Associate justices of the Supreme Court must disclose any trip in the case of the United States of over $415. You must disclose your movement to the citizens so that people can see transparency is extremely key. So they couldn't respond to us. And that was how we knew. And our sources were clear that they had something to hide. And we felt like, look, the best for us was to blow the meeting to the Nigerian people so that the meeting will not hold. Because we, we, we couldn't guarantee that we would know, we would have the information when they meet, where they were going to meet specifically, and then what they will be discussing. So we felt that why should this meeting even hold in the first place? If we are not going to get what specifically Tinubu, the president elect, you know, who is having legal, you know, is facing legal challenges now, you know, and the Supreme Court, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, who is going to empanel member, who is going to oversee the entire judicial challenge to legal challenge to Bola Tinubu's victory. Why should they be meeting? And why should they not tell Nigerians? They could easily meet in public have a handshake. There's no problem about that. They could meet at an occasion, you know, as long as Bola Tinubu is sworn in, you know, you could meet the chief justice. <laughs> the chief justice and the president are holding a meeting. You know, as long as it is disclosed, I'm not sure that there's anything on two words. I'm sure that um, Buhari must have met several chief justices, you know, in the course of his administration, you know, that might, you know, at the office at the villa or something. So, but why, why do this abroad? We didn't know. We, we, we didn't know everything, you know, about what we were going to do. We didn't have that information. But what we had certainly was that the chief justice was hibernating, you know, at a hotel in London, for reasons that he never disclosed, that nobody knew, and that for two days, for two days, director, you know, communication directors, and in both the Supreme Court itself and then the National Judicial Council couldn't tell us. So we felt that, look, rather than just hold this story forever, let's immediately let Nigerians know that this thing is in, is, is, you know, is, is taking place. So immediately, of course, we gave them like two days, that was like two days in advance for the chief justice to know that that thing, that meeting has blown, is no longer going to hold. No longer going to hold. So it was just, it was a coincidence that the day that we dropped the story, he was also returning to Nigeria on the same day, right? And so far, the Supreme Court has been unable to come out to tell Nigerians that the Chief Justice was away in London for so, 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 and so reason, and then show Nigerians the documents backing that trip, you know? So that, because it is the Supreme Court, and our role, we are, we, are, we, are, we are journalists, we are media practitioners, we are not prosecutors, we are not judges. Our own is to see and quickly raise alarm about something that is fishy that we've seen. We, have, we didn't convict the chief justice, we, did, we didn't hold meetings, we never said they held meeting. We said that they were going to meet. From the opening paragraph of our story to the, to the end, it was that including the sources at the Supreme Court that we cited in our story, that we quoted in verbatim in our story, it was that they were going to meet and the plan was for them to meet in London. Bola Tinubu left the country quietly, you know, at the same time. And so, so we, we already got information 
that the Supreme that the Chief Justice was in London and that he was going to be meeting Bola Tinubu even before Bola Tinubu, you know, before we got to know that Bola Tinubu had departed Nigeria. Don't forget, Sahara reporters dropped the story on the 22nd that Bola Tinubu had fled to Nigeria. You know, was flown out, I'm sorry, that Bola Tinubu was flown out of Nigeria. You know, on the 22nd. Nobody knew it before then. We got our story from the 21st. And then we reported 23rd, two days apart. We contacted the, 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 the both of them. So everything, everything is recorded, everything is documented. So how so how... so 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 this is how things this is how we do things here. We don't we don't just we don't just have we can't just have a school. And you know, some people were saying, oh, we, we only saw a picture of him leaving Nigeria. Uh, the, 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 the wheelchair picture. No, it was that, look, this man disguised leaving the country. He didn't say the purpose. He didn't disclose the purpose properly through official channels that he was taking him abroad. He didn't. He just left, sat on the wheelchair, pushed out. Anybody could use wheelchair. There's no doubt about that. That was not that was not in the I mean that was that was not the, the basis of our story. The basis of our story was that when he also got money, he also used wheelchair. Oh. And, you know when sorry about that. When he I... when he got to London, he also used wheelchair and used wheelchair to the hotel. And immediately he got to the hotel from the reception. Right? He started walking. And the next day, the day after. He was still cited by our sources who took pictures of him at the hotel, walking and you know was very free, doing his thing there. So that was exactly what happened. We just said that this Supreme Court Chief Justice of a country of a nation going to sit down in a hotel abroad is is odd. It's improper. So first of all, the, the Supreme Court in their statement said he went for medical treatment. Was there any 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 proof or evidence that he went for medical uh, treatment abroad? In, oh, in uh, no, no, I'm afraid there was no statement. If there had been a statement from the Supreme Court, we would have we would have used it. No, no, after the, the when he came yeah, back. Yeah, no, no, no. There was no statement when it, we, the Supreme Court, as far as people's gazette is concerned, has not responded to this matter. Has not issued any statement. The only, the only thing we've seen is the Supreme Court trying to use their, you know, the PR people in the media, you know, to try to, you know, uh, um, to put a subterfuge on Nigerians, to try to make this, you know, an issue, you know, that is a non-issue. But it's not a non-issue. The Supreme Court issue sent out a video, right? Supreme Court people recorded a video gave the video to their media you know pr people who then sent the media video out that he was attending he was praying in the mosque on friday right the video was not contextualized in any way he might be praying in the mosque on friday but people's gazette story was on friday the thursday afternoon a day before was he in london or was he not in london Supreme Court should not be seen doing dishonorable things like this. It's, 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 it's embarrassing trying to fool the public because the only thing they said was that, oh, he was seen at the mosque. But without saying that, oh, he was in London or not the day before. So they just wanted to fool Nigerians, thinking that Nigerians it was still in the dark days when people, when, people, when people cannot open their eyes to know that something is wrong or to be able to see. This is a jet age. This is the age of the internet, right? People could see that. People were saying that, well, London to Nigeria is only six hours. You can't just put out a video and say that he's praying on Friday afternoon. It's London to Nigeria is only six hours. Was he in London or not? That's what we want to know. You don't use your media PR people in the media who just to make money from you or whatever they want to give them money, who are happy to collect and do whatever they want to do. And then it was after that that we were seeing different. Uh, media bodies saying that the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice admitted admitted that, oh, he was in London from March 18 until March 23rd. 
you know, it came back on the same day that our story, really, our story went public. You know, our story went live on our website. You know, meanwhile, we've been working on the story for two days, and the Supreme Court, two spokespersons, Supreme Court and the NJC, both of them with close association with the, you know, work closely with the, with the, with the, with the Chief Justice, you know, that they had already been aware of, you know. So it's very, very simple. The Supreme Court ought to have told us the situation of the, of the Chief Justice, you know, when we asked, rather than, you know, abruptly hanging up the call and refusing to take the call again for the next 24, 48 hours. You know, the NJC, rather than say, no, we don't know where the Supreme Court justice is, we cannot comment on that, you know, it's only the Supreme Court that can do that, you know, should have told us that, oh, the Chief Justice was here on social social dates, is, you know, he's, he's, he's at home or abroad or wherever he might be. You know, it's as simple as that. So the Supreme Court or Tinubu coming out to deny that they had any, you know, they, they didn't meet, we didn't say that they meant, we said that they were going to meet, you know, and they had that plan. That's why both of them quietly left Nigeria without disclosing. That was what they wanted to do. So this, as of yet, the Supreme Court has not issued any statement. It is just some people in the media citing a Supreme Court spokesperson, first of all, the same person that could not respond to us for two days about the whereabouts of the Supreme Court, uh, the, of the Chief Justice. It's the same person that some people are quoting in the media as telling them that the Chief Justice traveled on the 18th and then returned on the 25th on medical uh, uh, you know, trip to London. You know, that's, that was what they said. But where did he stay in London? Was he at the hospital? Or were the doctors coming to the hotel where we saw him and had pictures of him where he was? You know, was, were, were they saying there, right? So where did they meet him? All these things must be clarified. The Supreme Court is supposed to be above board rather than playing this, you know, throwing religious card into it, throwing sentiments or due sentiments, you know, about, 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 about the Chief Justice. We, we don't need this. What we need is actual evidence of how the Supreme Court traveled, the decision before he traveled, you know, those who were in the know before he traveled, when did he come back into the country, you know, and how and every other thing should be disclosed to the Nigerian people. You know, it is the way things are done. It is the way things are done. All right. Um, so that's... the Supreme Court deliberately did not issue statement because the Supreme Court knows very well that a statement, it can be held responsible to a statement that it, it, it releases on this matter. That is why, they, and they don't know what we have. So the Supreme Court is being extremely careful. So that's why they are using media, they are, you know, throwing money to, to the media to try to, you know, downplay the story, you know, using their own narrative. That's what they are doing, rather than focus on responding to the actual issues surrounding the Supreme Court's justice street, you know, the Supreme, uh, Chief, Chief Justice street. That's, they are not doing that. What they are doing, basically, is trying to pull wool, you know, in the eyes of Nigerians. And people are, of course, people could, could, could see that for the charade that it is. So the Supreme Court should issue a statement saying this was the, the Chief Justice traveled he was not in London to meet with Tinubu. He was in London to receive medical treatment. He received medical treatment at Soso Hospital, you know, and then he moved to the hotel. Or he was not even at the hotel at all. Maybe they want to come and claim that. Let them come out and tell us. You know, they know that they will be held responsible. People will say, oh, so you were actually in London, truly. People will see that. That's why they didn't put out a statement. Because remember when they put out a statement that Chief Justice the same Chief Justice that was earlier this year, that he was not, or was it late last year, that he wasn't with, uh, he didn't say all those things that he said about praising the G5 or the PDP for, you know, how they are working to sabotage the, uh, uh, the PDP from within. You know, all these things definitely work to favor Bolatinovo, right? It was, it was clearly, they issued a statement denying that there was no such, you know, meeting. And I know the Supreme Court justice did not say anything. I mean, the CJN did not say anything like that. Only for a video to come out showing that Supreme Court actually, the uh, Chief Justice actually said boss, you know, and that there was a recording of it. They didn't know that there was a video when they denied that, you know, a couple of months ago. So they are being careful now of putting out a statement that they can be held to account for, you know, now that's what they are so that's why they are hiding and trying to use their you know 
um, uh, anonymous, you know, lackeys in the media to, to try and sweep the narrative and all that. Thing. But as far as we are concerned, the Supreme Court has yet to formally respond to the matter. Putting out a video, a conceptualized video about where he is and everything does not hold water at all. And the fact that they are even doing all these things, you know, um, goes into the possibility that that meeting probably that they, that they wanted to hold but probably wasn't even for the good of the nation. Because if it were, maybe you want to complain. You know, if you are so reluctant, if you can go so far to try and uh, manipulate the situation, it means that you have something to hide. Why should you? All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Samuel. It's uh, a one hour gone and uh, we, we are going to let... Um, some of our viewers to join us. Thank you for that explanation. Um, but before we do that, let me let me ask you: um, Are you looking forward to doing your job under the presidency of uh, Bola Tinubu? Do you think it will? Oh, be I, I, no, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mean, we have only one Nigeria, <laughs> so I am a citizen of Nigeria. I mean, I am a citizen of Nigeria first, right before I am a reporter. So Bola Tinubu. Muhammad Buhari has not been able to stop me. Muhammad Buhari has the reputation of, you know, being um, extremely uh, uh, vicious, you know, and ruthless against journalists, right? Um, he has not been able to, to, to stop Samuel de Munipe and uh, People's Gazette. Um, we, we launched about two years ago, you know, basically we are going to be three years um, by September. Um, but thankfully, Nigerians have been highly supportive, you know, um, and, and Nigerian public, you know, they know the public, you know, Nigerian people, they know where to get actual information that, will, that is helpful to them, you know, that they can use. And they know that People's Gazette, you know, has been matched as a major, you know, outlet for such information. And we, we really, really appreciate that. You know, um, as far as Bola Tinubu is concerned, he's welcome, you know, um, you know, legally he's the president, he's the president. We are all working towards the advancement of Nigeria. We hope that he will use his presidency to advance, you know, to, to take Nigeria to a level better than where we are, because nobody is happy where we are right now as, as, you know, as Nigeria. We were just talking about Biden, not congratulating him, and then talking about Kamala Harris visiting Nigeria without, I mean, this is in Africa without, you know, a wild start step in Nigeria. You know, we want to make sure that Nigeria stays is elevated. You know, that's going to be the focus, you know, and that's what we look forward to reporting. But, to say that maybe uh, Balatinobu's government will be riddled with scandal and people's gazette will not be able to, 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 to rise to the occasion, you know, of revealing, you know, uh, um, um, insidious activities there or, you know, activities that are against the Nigerian people. No, at people's gazette, once we have the information, if you are able to do it and we don't have the information, we don't report. But if we are able to get information from actual people, who actually know, people who know what's going on inside that region, who are in a position to know that this is what's going on and are able to supply evidence to us that this has happened, we will definitely let Nigerian people know. We don't hold anything back at people's gazette. Truly, we vet our information. Some information we get, not accurate enough or not strong enough to be in the public domain. We can take months working on such information. You know, some we, we reach a dead end and the story does not have to be in the public. We don't publish because it is not verified. But once, once we have been able to verify anything under the administration of Bola Tinubu, we are going to press. And Bola Tinubu will not be able to stop people's results. So the fear, we can fear, we, people can fear him that he's going to crack down. We are expecting him to crack down because like we've seen, his people are already laying the groundwork you know, and calling him Buhari incompetent that he has not been able to, to kill the media space, you know, despite how much, you know, um, on, on, you know, unsavory stories have been written, or, you know, on, on, uh, on flattering stories have been written about him and he couldn't do anything about it. That Bola Tinubu would not allow that. You know, that's not going to work. We have the entire drug issue that Bola Tinubu has on our website. You know, we, we, we uploaded the entire document on our website and people are, are continuing to download the documents, you know, we will not remove the documents. You know, we will if there is a factual issue, you know, but after the might have become a better person ever since. But it is not left to him to show Nigerians that he's a better person, you know, and he's not no longer he should not be seen anymore as a drug dealer, you know, provided that the Supreme Court, 
you know, is able to affirm him as the president of Nigeria. But for him to say that he wants to crack down on the media and people's gazette is going to be uh, at the top of his list, you know, he's, he's, he's only going to be making a news meet of, of himself. Because people's gazette is not going anywhere and not even bothering him, no matter how powerful he might see himself, you know, he's going to, because it's Nigeria. You know, Bola Tinubu is no more a Nigerian than I am. <laughs> he's no more a Yoruba than I am. He's no more a citizen than I am. So we are all, it is our country. We all have a role to play. While he's playing his role, you know, in the, at the presidency, we will be playing our role in the media space. All right. Um, we, we're going to go to our audience. Um, but one, one last thing before, and I will still have the right to ask you questions as we go along. How is it that the president elect could lead the country without anybody, any media uh, reporting that? How did that happen? Was it that he went oh, well, night? No, 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 no. It, 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 things happen a lot. Quite frankly speaking, the United States, you know, is a far more open society. But we've seen American presidents traveling, making secret trips, right? That the media will not know until they've gotten to the destination. Right? So it happens. The only difference, though, I must mention, is that they always go with pool reporters. In the, in, the, in the case of the last trip by Biden to Ukraine, the secret trip to Ukraine, they had a Wall Street Journal reporter, right? To, you know, to, to, to give entire pool reports to others, you know, relaying from her. But of course, she had, it was, it was a secret thing. She knew of the secret, but she couldn't report because it was a top secret thing. But a reporter was at least still carried along just to show that somebody who is independent knew about it. If everything was not entirely done secretly, you know, so that people will not know in the public. It is just that when should they know? So now the point, the point I'm trying to make here is that all the time these people travel, they can travel that we will not know in the media. It is very, very possible. All the time they do it, it's, very, it's a private jet. You might even be thinking that he traveled with his own jet. He might not. Maybe, he, he, maybe there was an example jet that just came in from, from you know, uh, Lanube or from, you know, from, 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 you know, Europe, from Asia or anywhere, into Abuja, you know, or into Lagos, or even Kano. You may not know. He will fly out with that, then his jet will meet him in, in, in another country. If Nerezi Lee must use his jet, even assuming that he used his jet out of Nigeria, you know, we are not all tracking his jet every other minute, every other hour. If you are sleeping as a reporter, you've gone to bed at 12 a.m., usually the time that our reporters sleep in Nigeria, right? If you have gone to bed, you know, and he flew, he left Nigeria at that time, he would have been in Europe by the time you woke up. He had already left the country. And the first thing that is on your mind will not be to go and check, check his plane. It was just silly on the part of, I'm sorry to say, his media handlers to think that he can travel for so long without it being detected. No, it will be detected. He might take a 24 hour, maybe for take hours, but it will occur to somebody to say, where is Balatinubu's private jet? Because it's the president elect, all lies on him. So for them to think that they could fly, it could only be abroad for so long before people would know that he's out of the country. In 20, um, 2017 or 18, Buhari left Nigeria. I think that was still a premium time then. Buhari left Nigeria. I mean, I'm sorry, he left the United States, he left the Joint Base Andros, you know, after a meeting in Washington. And the people that he was on his way to Nigeria. Two days later, he was not back in the country. Nobody knew. You know, I just happened to be at the office that Sunday evening. I was trying to, you know, do something at the office, and it just occurred to me, where, where is he? the president? The next thing I checked his name, oh, this man has not even arrived in Nigeria. And that was our premium time video story that two days after leaving Washington, this Baba has not returned to Nigeria. And that was how his people now issued a statement of saying that the president stopped by in Europe to see his doctor and relax. So these people have ways of moving about. Sinuku might have left Nigeria to Europe. You can track his plane to Paris. Okay, the plane is in Paris. All of you are looking at it that the plane is still in Paris. Meanwhile, he had left Paris himself, you know, through another private jet 
that nobody will have any idea about. You are looking at display on a tarmac, you know, through the flight trader or any of the other portals, you know, and saying that it's in, it's in Paris. Yeah, that's true. But himself, where, he, where is he? You might not be able to tell. That is the thing. These people, they use decoy all the time when they are moving, knowing that the world is on them. They know that, oh, they can track my private jet. No problem. Give them the private jet. Leave it there in uh, Gatwick. You know, leave it there at JFK. Let them see that it is there. Meanwhile, he has joined another plane. He has been secretly taken from another plane to another airport to another destination. How then do you track him? Tinubu is right. not American president. is not an American president. Tinubu is a Nigerian president. How many people know Nigerian president? No Nigerian president. I'm sorry. You know that is the so we have all these challenges. You know, I remember Bukola uh, Sawaki uh, at home. You know, when they wanted to remove him from the parliament as a Senate president, he used the decoy. He was at the parliament. Meanwhile, the SSS, his own oddly, didn't know that Bukola Sawaki was not at home. Everything was in order with the, with the SSS at home in Metama. But the man had left the National Assembly. So if the SSS did not know that Bukola was not within, you know, with them rather, how would the media know? You know, so I don't see it as a failure at all. I'm sorry, I'm not being defensive about us. You know, I don't see it as a failure. One thing we just thank, we are thankful for was that Sarah Reporters was the first, right, to, you know, to, to just occur to that, oh, wait, um, where's this man? You know, where's this man? Over the past 24 hours. Where, so let's try and check his plane. You know, and then they tried to check his plane. And then they said, look, it seems like his plane was somewhere in Europe. You know, his plane might be somewhere in Europe. Maybe he has gotten to Singapore through Executives or any of the other airports. He might have flown to Tetibro. You won't know. So All right. That, let's not use the private jet as the basis of where Bola Tinubu is. <laughs> no, let's not do that. It's not, right. it's not any serious indication. You know, right, because so you might be seeing the uh, Air Force One. You were seeing Air Force One on the tarmac in Rheinstein. Meanwhile, Biden is somewhere else entirely in mm -hmm. another country. So let's just be careful All right. about that. Thank you, Samuel. So we have a lot of people who want to join us and the studio is full and um, we have a lot of people here. But what we're going to do is, um, so let me just give the guidelines. One question only, and, and please go straight to the question. Um, if, if you don't do that, I may have to um, mute you and then go to somebody else. Um, okay, so one question only, just think about your best question. Uh, if we have opportunity, if he stays long and we have the time, we can come for a second round. But for the first round, just one question from each, 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 uh, anybody here. Now, Samuel, do you want to take one each or you want to take uh, two or three at once? Um, I think I'll prefer one. That makes it more interesting. Okay, all right, all right. One question uh, for one person and then we go to the next. Uh, Prince, you are first. Go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Damages. And uh, thank you, uh, Samuel Ogutiki. Um, my question goes like this. Um, what, why would it be that Bola Tidubu would choose France as a resting place at this time that, you know, that France, the workers are, are going at it with the government? You know, because to me, if I'm going for a vacation to a country and definitely there is strike and every other thing in that place, I wouldn't go there to go and rest. I'll definitely have to go to a different place. So it calls into question why the choice of France. Right. If you can, if you, you know. I mean, um, is, is president elect, um, even if he had been sworn in, even if he's the president, you know, um, he, you know, we have to be very um, um, considerate about his health. You know, throughout the campaign, don't forget the video. I think we blew that video of him at the Awudale, the Palace of Awudale. You know, where clearly he was, he was incontinent. Right? He, he, um, he basically urinated on his on his body. Clearly, right? Uh, that was sad. You know, so there is no body who uh, is in good health. 
you know, an adult that will do, will do that. So clearly, he has not admitted it. He probably will not admit it. You know, Buhari has gone for eight years without admitting anything, and is still the president. You know, that is the society that we have. Our society is peculiar. Now, let's give, so let's concede that Tinubu has health challenges, even though he's not telling us. Let's be considerate. You have it. You don't want to tell us. No problem. Now, how he's moving when he's traveling? He's supposed to tell us. He's. We are entitled. We. we he's constitutionally bound. He's legally bound to tell us. You know, he's morally bound. You are a leader. You know, you don't you don't get to just do things your way. You have to do things according to the people that you are governing, to the country. You know, I am not I'm not a family man anymore. I am the father of the nation. So therefore, the entire nation will know, should know where I am, what I am doing, and everything and everything. You know, we, we see menu of food. The every bless menu of the White House is subjected to FOI. It is the way it's supposed to be. It's not a security breach for me to know what the president ate last night. It's not a security breach for me to know that the president is going away on the medical, to receive medical care. Our country, unfortunately, we, we, can, we are blaming them. They, are, they should give us medical facilities where they would also be able to receive treatment. But they haven't done that, right? Okay, let's also concede that. They haven't done that, but we have to know that they must take care of themselves. It's, it's extremely costly. For you to, for a president to die or because of lack of medical care and everything for a nation. So we don't want a president to die just because the president couldn't get medical care within the country that he's serving. You know, we, we yes, it shouldn't travel abroad to receive medical care. Please let's understand my point. I am not saying that it should be going abroad to receive medical care. They should have a good hospital defeating. However, because of the priority, right, his health comes forth for the Nigerian people. Wherever he's going to get it, no problem. But you should tell us why we are rather he's going because we are paying for it as taxpayers. So we should know where he's getting the treatment from. We don't have hospitals in Nigeria. We recognize that you are the president. We recognize that your health is paramount. Go and take care of yourself. But tell us where you are going to. If it is Paris that he feels very well that he was able to get doctors. You know, maybe he had been able to interact previously with doctors in Paris. It's okay for him to go there and receive medical treatment from his doctors that he trusts. Because one thing is, I mean, we all know the role that doctors play. We all have doctors, you know, and we know how confidential our health information is to us personally. But with that, we are individuals. We are not the president. You know, the president should be able to be very, very proactive actually, in disclosing information. So if he's in Paris right now, receiving treatment in the, you know, amid some oil and every other thing, if that's where he feels comfortable, you know, I don't think it is particularly suspicious that he's using Paris at the time the city is in somewhere in its own. You know, it's possible that he's there. I have no guarantees, right? As a reporter, we don't know where he is. You know, that's what I would tell you. The fact that his private jet is there, some of his oddities might be, uh, some of his aides might be cited in a hotel in Paris. Not enough indication to say that Sidibola Ahmed Tinubu personally is in Paris. So we don't know. We can just, it will be, it will be safe for us to say that at least we, maybe he's not in Nigeria, but where he is specifically might be so difficult to tell. All right. Thank, thank you, Samuel. Thank you, Prince. Uh, let's go to Ayo. Ayo, you're next. Hey, mute yourself, please. Hi, uh, Sam. Thank you for coming on the program. Uh, before I ask my question, I want to read it to you how you reported uh, Chief Justice Ariwola presence in London. Chief Justice so look how the Ariwola has been cited in London, pretending to be physically challenged old man. People's Gazette lands in what Supreme Court sources said was a clandestine preparation for a meeting with President-elect Bola Tinobu. Um, pretending to be physically challenged old man in preparation to meet the President-elect. This is a very categorical statement. It didn't say suspected. It didn't say uh, 
uh, alleged, but you were categorical that he acted like a physically challenged. So I was listening to you while you were doing the narration. The only thing you have said is that it was on a wish chair. You live in New York. And you know, a wish chair service is for the asking. I have used it before. I was tired. I wasn't even sick. I, require, I requested for a wish chair and they brought it for me because I didn't want to work this out with them. So that is a no point. Everything that you have put together today to arrive at that conclusion is nothing more than put two plus two together to arrive at 22. Uh, did you know why I said that? You said Justice Ariola did not disclose that he was leaving the country. And I'm saying as a lawyer, a practicing lawyer in America and admitted in Nigeria 33 years ago, that there is nothing in our laws, even in American law that says a justice of the Supreme Court must disclose where they are going. The 413 traveling you mentioned about is about financial disclosure, not about destination. So consider the weight of the accusation you have made there. It is country that is capable of putting that country on fire. So that kind of reporting must come with some responsibility. We already have a very contested election. Everybody is still bitter about it. Your outfit came out to report that a chief justice of the country that is likely, that is most, that is definitely going to be sitting on this case because we all know it will get to Supreme Court eventually. Is meeting and you are so categorical about reporting it. And now when you are trying to explain, all I had was congestions. And it was on which year, then it was seen at the hotel working. Of course, when you leave the airport, you start working. It doesn't mean you are sick. It doesn't mean anything. You can ask for it just because you are tired. This man is an old man. Nothing in the picture shows that he disguised. His trademark hat is on his head. His beard is there. He didn't disguise anything. He left the country on the 11th. Tinobu left the country in 21. If I'm coming to meet you, will I go 10 days? And Tinobu didn't even go to London. You said it. It was in France. I think it was Spain, France. And it has not even got into London at all. Ten days after this man has left the country. So what I see there is that I didn't see how I can put together your story to arrive at your conclusion. And I think, and it has become a major issue. And uh, I think you still need better explanation. Because everything, the premises you are laying that you need to tell you, Chief doesn't need, need not tell you that it's trying to the country. Especially if it's private traveling, like I was sick, I'm traveling. They here too need not disclose to you, especially when it comes to medical matters. It could be part of privacy for his medical situation. They didn't have to disclose that to you, except you are going to show me what law says that. So this thing smack of irresponsibility, considering the weight. So I don't know what you have to say about this and the consequences, because you have to think of consequences of what you are going to write how it might affect the policy, whether it's going to heat it up, whether it's going to cause crisis. Okay. And I've not seen that in your explanation. So I want you to clarify further. And now you are able to convince me, or uh, except you want to show me the laws that say you should have disclosed, or anything else it did, apart from sitting on the wheelchair at the airport, to show you that it's meeting to All right. Thank you, Ayo. Uh, someone. Okay. Um, I, uh, yeah, thank you very much for, for your take. Um, the fact is clear. Our story is clear. You read it. You just read the opening paragraph. You know, um, like I like um, I told um, uh, an NGO that uh, communicated with us on this matter from um, Belgium. Uh, clearly, you know, what we reported, we didn't touch a single word, a letter in our story. Our story is the way we put it out. We said, you read it, that this man was cited in London, you know, pretending to be a physically challenged old man, you know, um, from our sources at the Supreme Court. And then they said that it was in preparation to meet him again. Preparation, we didn't say that it was for him, it was during a meeting, he was preparing to meet. And our story was clear from the open, including the sources cited, that the meeting had not held as of the time we reported it from our sources. Now, you are talking about the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice, you know, that it shouldn't be known that in the United States, the uh, uh, movement of, 
if you are moving outside Washington, D.C., it is subjected to the Air Force in the United States. I don't know where you get your information from, but I prefer that people should be knowledgeable. You need to read better for you to understand before you come to the public, you know, public deal like this and say that the United States, uh, Supreme Court justices can travel, can move about, you know, without disclosing. No, it, they must disclose. The only reason why some countries are better than ours is strictly because there is transparency. Wherever you have transparency, you will be very reluctant to do a wrongdoing because you know that people are watching. But where you know that nobody will see you, you can go on and do anything in secret. You know, it leaves room for people to do things. Our story was clear. The movement was suspicious. We, they, we were clear. We didn't know what they were going to discuss, but they said, so Justin said that it may, you know, be due. It is, it is absolutely journalistic to see something and say something. The entire Trump collision started just shortly around his, being, uh, his inauguration, while he, when he was president-elect. It was briefed that there was a dossier put together by Christopher Steele, the former F MI6 uh, uh, agent, you know, about his activities with Russians. It wasn't like, oh, they were sure, the media was not sure whether or not Trump colluded with Russia. But they were seeing, you know, things that shouldn't be. Trump was a private individual as a, at the time, you know? And there was, people were saying, no, he went to Russia, they slept in a hotel in Moscow. His people at Trump uh, Tower in New York met people in Moscow, all while they were still a private in the river. People were holding him account, to account because now he has become a president elect. And they mentioned everything. And it was reported for like two years. Ultimately, there was a judicial panel that looked into the matter, led by the former FBI chief, Bob Miller, you know, and said that they couldn't see that he colluded with Russia. But they gave details that the suspicious activities, some of his close aides, you know, were indicted, some were charged, some pleaded guilty, and all that and all that. Ultimately, he wasn't charged personally himself for colluding with Russia. But the activities were suspicious enough, and the media reported enough for them to win the Pulitzer. The Washington Post and the New York Times shared the Pulitzer for their reporting of suspicious activities of Trump campaign and the Russian, that is the, that is the, you know, the preeminent journalism award, no matter how you, no matter how high you rise in journalism, you cannot win more than the Pulitzer award. And the Pulitzer panel felt that it was worthy of getting an award, you know, just by making noise that something happened so that they can be looked into. Our story was that the chief justice movement was suspicious, you are here, saying that there's nothing that says it should, it should disclose this movement. And uh, the chief justice of the Supreme Court yes. should just exactly. be seen going into a hotel, hold on, going into a hotel in London to, to be staying there and be, why should that be? Where do you stay when you travel? When, when, he was, when he was, am I chief justice? So we, if, uh, where are they if, supposed if, to stay? Government officials, where are they supposed to stay? The Under the bridge? Right? It shouldn't be seen going to a hotel in London to stay for nothing. What is it doing there? Why is that's that your what business? It has a duty to find out, there. not to make conditions. I, I, I am a citizen before being a reporter. I'm a taxpayer. You didn't say you suspicious. Understand? You are categorical in your statement. You didn't say suspicious. You are so categorical that it was meeting to Nobu, but you are not able to prove it. Read a single paragraph that said that he had met in Nobu. What are you talking about? You are preparing to meet to meet in Ubu was categorical. Is yes, that what you said that he was preparing to meet Bola. Okay, so it Did was you very, very that? clear. Did you prove that, that it was there to meet in Ubu? It was a suspicious movement. We are a media organization. We okay. saw something fishy. It we does not allow you to manufacture stories. If it is, if it is, if it is problem, yes. ultimately, that, oh, the chief justice was in London, you know, his trip was not about meeting Bola Tinubu, but about something else. So be it. We are not prosecutors in the media. Journalists are not prosecutors. All right. Journalists I, I, are not judges. We I, say I, things I, and we say it. That is the way we play. That is the role of the media. If you now investigate fully and you don't find anything, that is fine. But for media to see something this huge and keep quiet on it, knowing the reputation of our judges, of our politicians, 
of the Supreme Court itself that lied, that told a bare face lie in an in lie in an official statement that Ari Walla was not in Patapot where he said all those things that he said, only for a video to come out afterwards showing that he actually did. That is to tell you how bad things are, and we cannot keep quiet. So while you may you may you, you may think about how this is in your own personal position that the Supreme Court Judge Chief Justice should not say should not disclose his whereabouts, is free to do things in secret. I personally don't think that is proper. My organization, the, the People's Gazette, as a media organization, does not agree with you. With due respect, that the Chief Justice should be moving about without any sort of safeguards, any checks at all about his activity, you know, and that is the position of Hello, Dr. 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 Damages. No, 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 why is everybody talking? Hold on. Uh, thank you, Ayo, so much for, for your question. And let's move to Okija. Okija, you're next. Hi, uh, thank you, Mr. Olumide and uh, uh, Dr. Damage, sir. I think you, you guys kind of, you know, uh, from the questions you asked asking me, you know, I've answered my question, all the, the questions I had about uh, Bayo and uh, Tinubu, you know, pro, what they are thinking behind why should Bayo be making such statement and uh, the way you attributed it to what uh Chidibu's wife said before and uh, so that you know like um um you know shows us you know what's going on uh in the background so but okay now um the question i'm gonna ask you uh do, you know just speculation you know i want to speculate if there if there will be president Chidibu, uh, based on all these things they've been said you know like bio and other things you know about you know people of south East uh, origin, you know, uh, what do you think would be the relationship between the uh, Tribu presidency and the people of Southeast, uh, and also in relation to like a release of Nande Kano? Um, basically, I would um, expect the, 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 the Nande Kano uh, situation is a national security situation, Nigeria considers a national security situation, um, even though substantially um, it's about a speech that he was making from abroad, um, whether he incited violence, um, because we've seen some um, IPOB elements in specifically inciting violence, uh, whether the state has evidence of Nam Dekano um, calling people to violence, um, you know, I, I, you know, it's not, it, it may be out there, you know, um, I'm not saying that it may not be out there. You know, but I haven't seen. It. So that is, but they are treating it as a national security issue, and I think the president, if, if Tinubu becomes president, he will be briefed on the, you know, the entire case with Nandi Kano. He will see more than what you and I might have seen in the public, and then he will be able to decide. Uh, no, just suppose that, I will be able to just suppose that the national, you know, the national interest. Because I didn't try, John. I'm sorry. I'm it, sorry. Let me let me take out uh, the. Uh, okay. Go ahead. So he will be able to 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 weigh whatever is presented to him by the SSS, you know, with the entire interest of the country. So that's that on Nandekano. As for Bola Tinubu's uh, relationship with the Southeast, you know, uh, of Nigeria, I would not expect, um, notwithstanding his inner circles, you know, his wife or Bayo Nonuga and others who might have expressed. Um, terribly bigoted, um, you know, uh, positions on on the Igbo, you know, uh, Nigerians of Igbo origin, um, is going to be president, you know, and I don't see Bola Tinubu um, saying that, you know, ninety seven percent and the other, uh, the remaining, you know, uh, um, um, you know, crop of citizens, you know, like Buhari tribes to delineate. Um, we might not see that, you know, uh, under Tinubu. Um, however, we should we should pay very much attention to how he treats the people uh, of the southeast. Anything short of treating southeast people in the same way that he would treat me, that I mean, fellow Yoruba like him, you know, I don't think would be acceptable to any Nigerian, you know. And I think that's just fine. All right, okay. thank you, thank you, Okija. Uh, and Gozeka, you're next. Okay. Good evening, Dr. Damage. Good evening, Dr. Samuel. Thank you for saying this. I really read the story and I'm interested in what is going on. So the first one, I I want to say that I want to ask my question. Let me just say something. You see many Nigerians for believing anything that is reported about these people. So I'm afraid I didn't hear. Uh, okay. We can't hear you very well. Yeah. Can you hear me now? 
Okay, try okay. again. You may want to, yes. Okay, so I was saying that you can't blame any Nigerian for believing whatever is reported about these people. So any, anybody that doubts it, that's their problem, but the average Nigerian believes it. But my question is, this attitude of having our politicians, our public officials travel outside for medical purposes, especially somebody in a sensitive position as a president elect, is it not dangerous? As in, it, it won't it affect us? Can't it be used against not just him now because he's representing the rest of us? Can't an enemy country, I don't want to use the word enemy, but a country that wants to harm us, can't they use his medical record? Do they, is, is it safe? How safe is it? How can we get them to stop this thing? Because I am thinking it's not safe, but I just want to hear what you have to say about that. Hmm. Hmm. Um, thank you very much. Um, I mean, it's, it's a very interesting question, um, especially from the perspective that you brought in. Um, look, I, I will be free to tell you that it has serious national security implications. I agree entirely. Why? President Buhari was abroad at a stretch, right? Was it between May and August? about 109 days, you know, 105 days, the longest stretch, you know, when he traveled in 2017, because when he came back was when he was, you know, talking about um, what month did he go once and all that back then, that was highly controversial. But he was away in London to receive treatment, so to undergo something fundamentally, you know, uh, um, um, effective, right, that almost, it was basically like rejuvenated. We are very happy to see him that way. But what process, right? What did he do? What did he give up for, from, you know, what, what, what portion of Nigeria did he have to chip away for that to happen, for him to be rebirth in that manner? For, for you know, for him to 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 become what he is now, he is now is, because we can all see that the difference is clear. You know, the the doctors that revived uh, uh, Muhammad the Buhari, what did the Buhari give them? This is what we are talking about. It's our country. We should be concerned. What did they have to give up to be that? We are happy that he's fine. No doubt, but at least you should come with some level of transparency. He did this in the UK. That's what they told us. We don't know whether he was actually in the UK. His jet was at uh, that week um, for, for some time. Or that there was there's one started, if I'm not mistaken, airport. His, uh, the presidential jet was there for months, you know, at a stretch. It's possible that that indicated at the time that he was in the UK. It's also possible that he flown him away from another place to another country that we, all of us cannot even imagine where he actually was treated, right? And then revived in the manner that he was revived. We are all just assuming that he went to the UK. The UK that we know is a country that, you know, at least has a very high level compared to the rest of the world, level of information you know, coming out that you can hardly be able to cover some things up, you know. So, you know, uh, Buhari's uh, treatment being covered up like that, it could also be because it was not even in the UK that he received the treatment. It was in another totally closed country using underworld, you know, doctors in the underworld. He didn't, maybe he didn't just go into a hospital in the UK and receive the treatment. We don't know because he's not been transparent about it. Now, if it were in the UK that he received the treatment, as they said, okay, when do we know that the UK would then be able to declassify, get the doctors, you know, to say the information that you received, you should turn, you know, on the treatment of Muhammad Bukhari, maybe after he, long after he's dead, or maybe they don't even have such uh, uh, provisions in the law to say, well, you have to turn in some of the, because whether you like it or not, it's a private information. But the president is not a private individual. So would this do the, would the same thing still apply to him in the area of the treatment that he received? Because it's very, very dangerous. If we can get the UK to hold the UK to account, France to account, because these people, they don't seem to be coming to the United States. Is it 
because they know that the United States will not allow them to be here for so long to receive treatment here without disclosing to Nigerian people, or that the United States could easily, the government of the United States could easily be, you know, uh, 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 be pressured by Nigerians, right, here to say, this man, the treatment he received at Water Ridge or any other medical facility, you know, we must know what it was about. We are entitled to this idea that they could be sued. Maybe they know that there is a law in the United States that if they are sued for the disclosure of the information relating to the treatment of the president, the things will be disclosed. That's why probably why they are not coming to the United States. You know, in the case of France and UK, Nigerians can mount pressure on those countries to let them know that we've had enough of our leaders coming here. Or in the case of Switzerland, where Port Bia had been for years at the hotel. You know, because it cannot work the other way around. I don't see a UK prime minister coming to receive treatment in Ibadan for a long time. I don't see it happening. So, you know, because they know that it may not be kept secret. So why, why is the UK enabling this? Yes, they can receive treatment abroad. I'm very fine by them receiving treatment abroad while also making sure that they put in place good health care in Nigeria at home. That's okay. But while receiving treatment abroad, which we are entitled to know the processes. What, what kind of treatment are you receiving? How much are you spending? So that we don't have a president that you've slightly said that could easily, easily, that because they have everything on you, going to a foreign country to a, for foreign individuals to reveal such information could compromise our president. I'm sorry to say, I'm a reporter, but I know that this is a possibility. You know, there is no way in the world you will have the United States government president going to Russia to receive treatment. You know, it will never happen. Russian president will never come here to receive treatment. It could be used as a basis for espionage, you know? So I am concerned as well as you are that the, this thing, there should be more accountability. And since we know that we cannot hold our own leaders to account, we might we can demand from them, but they will not acknowledge us and there is almost nothing we could do about that. But in the UK, in France, we could pressure them and they will cave because there is accountability in those countries. You know, so we can, we can, so maybe the pressure should shift to those countries, to those countries in there, so that they will no longer, so that they can look for other places to receive their treatment. But maybe they are not even in those countries, and we are just giving, you know, we are just, they are just giving us implication, I mean, indication that they are there. So if you are seeking information that they don't have, you know, they may, at least if they say that, oh, you didn't receive treatment in our country, at least we will know where to look, where else to look, and all that and all that. So that's just the point I'm making. But rightly, as you said, it's highly concerning that an individual doctor or a group of doctors that we don't know in the underworld, you know, have treated the president, rejuvenated him, what what cost to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we cannot tell. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Angozeka. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, let's go to Ibo Bezik. Ibo Bezik, you are next. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Damages. Uh, and um, I um, come from a historical perspective. When I listen to you talking about um, President of the United States can travel anywhere without people knowing. And indeed, we've seen that happen. By the time, be it Trump, be it Biden, by the time there is success, we are told, we are being shown he was in Iraq. That's great. And we appreciate it because we understand that safety first. Having said that, in our own case, and what we've gone through with our current president, Muhammadu Buhari, health is wealth. And of course, we wish the health of our presidents. They are property of the state, if I use that word, property of the state. And at any given point in time, wherever they are, 
we actually know one way or the other how our money is being spent. And in the publications that I run, Ibo Basics, since 1995, ibobasics.com, you can check that out. We say custodians of the conscience. And then in basicsexpress.com, which is the Nigerian space, we don't break news. Because whatever news you break today, in the next hour, it may turn out to be that you broke the wrong news. Except, of course, if we are there, we saw it koro koro by our eyes. Without much ado, I refer back to 1998 at the University of London. Uh, 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 Please, yeah, please. Are you good? Let me, let me we have a lot of people, and he doesn't. He's not playing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He's not playing. I know, I know. He Dr. doesn't. Uh, uh, My premise uh, for the question, which is why yeah. I talked about property of the state. Yeah, what I'm. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. The University of London. Give me hold one on. second, please. Let me Ibobis, ask my question. It's a historical perspective. It's, it's not like just about you. Hold on, because after you, other people will do the same thing. What I'm saying is this: we have so many people, and he's not staying for too long. So we want to get as many people as possible. So can, you can go straight to the question. I'm saying it's not just for you, for many people, because you are not the only one that want to give background. Okay. All right. We'll, All right, we'll have that conversation. Ogundibe, history. Whatever we are doing today will be judged as history tomorrow. The question that I have, are you related to Samuel Ogundipe? S. O. Ogundipe, the publisher, the writer, that we wrote, we read when we were in high school, in elementary school, in secondary school. Are you related to the Ogundube? All right, thank you. No, he hasn't answered yet. Are you related to him? He will. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I thought that was your only question. I was going to answer when you. Okay, uh, because that, Rudolph that, keeps uh, classing uh, me of what okay, I'm talking okay, okay, about. Okay, so, no, 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 no. Um, I'm only, I'm only related to uh, Baba Femi Ogundube, the former, um, the Agnoses, um. Chief of Supreme Court, uh, Chief of Staff Supreme Court, as under agreement. Do you know about the historical writers, the people who published those books that we are reading? Yeah, yeah, of course. I know the, I know the Ogunipe, I know the book that you are talking about. I know the series that you are talking about. I think that one is uh, Ogunipe from Ojo. I am from Ijebu. Thank you very much. I rest All my right. case for me. All right, thank you. All right, let's go to the next person. Electricity, you are next. Thank you, Dr. Jam uh, Dr. Damage. Uh, since we don't have the time, I will go straight to my question. Uh, Mr. Samuel Ogundipe, as you understand, emotions are high in Nigeria. And uh, your reporting is my, I'm following up with uh, your, a matter of the law. So if you can refer me to, if we are holding our leaders accountable, we are, we are applying the law. I believe I'm correct in that. The Chief Justice of a Federation, is it required by law to disclose his movement to the general public? Please listen to my question very well. To the general public or to certain departmental in the government for security reasons? Could you refer me to the law where I can see it, please? We all, um, there is no actual law that's even said that the president of Nigeria must disclose his trip to Nigerian people. But we are all demanding that our president, we should know where he is. I don't know how we keep doing things like this with the press. It has, so you, it you has, has it, 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 no, there is no law, there is no law that says that the United States president must disclose his, his, you know, his trip you know, in the manner that you are talking about. But they always do. We are a civilized society. There is no law that says they must do that. But we, in the media, we can hold him accountable for his I, movement. I, you know, I agree can be you. held accountable for his movement. So, it is not, so, so the question is not about whether there is actually law. There is no law that says he must do that. We did not okay. say that. But even if he had met Sinubu, there is no okay. law that said he cannot meet with Bola Sinubu. So, okay. so the question about whether it is on law or not is not the actual basis here. Our story okay. was that the chief justice and the president-elect had a an undisclosed secret meeting to meet. You know, an okay. undisclosed plan to meet at a secret meeting. That's all we got. If no, I, don't, any Nigerian I, I understand. In that information, Sorry, I, I don't want to drag it for my... If there's another Nigerian... Interested, one second, I understand. 
substantially, from people that I've related with, they are very much interested in knowing the chief justices whereabouts. You know, if you are not interested, it is your personal position. So I agree with that as well. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, okay. Thank you, Elizabeth, for your question. No, Rudolph, just one second. No, what I'm trying to say is this. No, 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 no. It's my question. No, what I'm trying to say is this. Hold on. We may be putting the man, reporting the story, may be putting the man's life at risk, given to the sensitivity of his position. That is just my point I am making. I believe in holding our leaders accountable. But you see, when government disguises, presidency disguises that they are going so so place that they are going to be. You will agree with me for security reasons. They don't want to, people to know where they are. And the chief justice position, even in the context of Nigeria, is a very sensitive position. It has to report to certain individuals for security reasons so that they know where he is. He's not exposed to any anything. But for the general public, it becomes a great risk. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph. I appreciate okay. it. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Ovia Yonis. Okay, go ahead. Meet yourself, okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Samuel Lugunti. Uh, it's uh, Autumn Miller that said that a good newspaper, I suppose, is a nation talking to itself. Now, my question is coming from your um, uh, answer to, uh, I think, Ayo, the guy that spoke earlier and I asked you about your categorical statement that you made regarding the subject matter. And I, I appreciate your response to him, but I became worried when you cited uh, Trump uh, as an example. When I, mean, I mean Trump, what happened to Trump? What uh, the uh, New York Times and the Red reported about Trump in regards to uh, Russia? You also want to agree with me that that was, should I use the word fake news? Because nothing came out of it, and it was clear at the end of all the shenanigans that was that was just a that was just politics, that was just a jamboree, and we actually demanded for an apology. Yeah, okay. here you are pointing that example, example of something that was condemned all over the world after the event. Mm -hmm. You are pointing that example. Are you? That doesn't, that doesn't mean that you are reinforcing what are you accuse you of? Of you made a categorical statement. Not final I understand that you are in news a uh, in newspaper, but it's very important that what you are putting your name to, that if we start digging, just like what they did about Trump, that we are going to come out as what you presented. That's my question. All right. Yes, um, thank you um for the for the for that question. Um, that, that's a quite fantastic um question. Um, my context is in the media context. Do you understand? I mentioned that the media, media organizations are not prosecutors. Media organizations are not courts of law. Media organizations, media journalists are watchdog. A dog may bark tonight. You say, well, you look out, there's nothing here. The dog may bark tomorrow. And you find out that the dog has been trying to save your life, you know? So it is the way the media works worldwide. I was saying to you that Donald Trump, it was later found that he didn't do any wrongdoing. He didn't collude with Russia by the Bob Miller, a competent panel found Donald Trump not to have colluded with the media, I mean, with Russia you know, contrary to the indication in the media for almost two years or thereabouts. I said that. And I was saying it in the context of a Wala situation. The media, the, um, Donald Trump might not have been found to have colluded with Russia, but there were indications that sustained the story for two years. Different perspectives to the story, different meetings with Russian elements that raised questions to the point that those questions were answered in the media substantially. And then it deceived the Pulitzer, which is the greatest journalism award, you know, on earth today. 
it deserved the Pulitzer, the Pulitzer panel found that story worthy because of the elements that were brought out to, you know, and then to force the panel of inquiry, who then said, okay, ultimately, even though Trump's uh, inner circles did this and that, himself personally, they couldn't see that he did. Our story was that the Chief Justice is in London to meet Sinobu. We didn't say he, they wanted to plot to subvert Nigeria. We didn't say that he was meeting Tinubu, Tinubu will be handing money over to him. We didn't say that. We only said that these people are having a meeting that we don't know about. Why are they not telling us about the meeting? That's all what we do, what we did. You know, if Nigerians are now saying that, well, well, if you have nothing to hide, why don't you tell us about your meeting? It's so really simple. There's this saying in Yoruba, that uh my for back for a while and know something for me on should have to be it. It basically means that they ask a vegetable seller, a young child selling vegetable, they say, bring vegetable. And the child said, you know, the vegetable seller, said, my vegetable is not from the dumpster, you not, you know, it's not from the a, a refuse. I did, you know, I got my vegetable. Who asked you that question? Let's buy vegetable, that's all. But because the 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 the, 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 the implication is that the vegetable is actually from the, 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 the dump. So it's very straightforward. Our story was that you, these people are meeting. We are a media organization and we felt that we owe it to Nigeria to let them know, look, this story might not have been published by another media organization because they, their own editorial judgments may be that, okay, and they want to meet. Both of them are leaders of Nigeria. Maybe they just want to discuss, you know, handover, or they want to discuss, you know, transition generally, or something. No problem. We have no problem. That is their own judgment in the in that organization. In our own judgment at People's Gazette, you know, we had a meeting of all editors, two meetings, in fact, before this story was published, and it was a unanimous. There was no single dissent in our team of editors, you know, male, female, young, old. In our organization, we all saw that the best for us was to blow this thing out so that that meeting will not even hold. And if there was any such plot to have any meeting, you know, there will, it will not even hold anymore before the Supreme Court finally decides because we don't know between them who is even going to initiate communication anymore because this one has been exposed. So they are not going to probably risk it again. But it is Nigeria. It is Nigeria. Nothing can be taken beyond this people. But at least in this particular instance, our story is that the meeting wanted to hold, our own was to preempt it, make sure that it doesn't hold and it didn't hold. In 2021, around April, many of you might not have noticed, we reported, we reported at People's Gazette, citing a memo, which we still have a copy of till tomorrow, that the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, had written the president Telling the president specifically to suspend the fifth schedule of the constitution, the, shed, the, con the session that guaranteed fundamental rights to Nigerians. The difference between a dictatorship or a martial law and martial rule, rather, and a democracy, a constitutional republic like ours, you know, basically is about the rights of the people on that, that regime. So currently, we are in a civil rule. What is holding the nation, this constitution, is basically the fundamental rights section in which you and I have rights as Nigerians that we can challenge. Not, we are not living under a bacha anymore. That's just what that part. Now, Attorney General said that the president should, should, should suspend it because of Nam the Kanu and Sunday Yuhu. Now we blew that story open. It will have caught Nigerians by surprise. Because the president we knew, and we probably still know, that is very much listening to Malami. And it was, it was a, a minister you know, of the Federal Republic that was very concerned about such a memo getting to the president and happened to, to, to know about it. That said, this is, cannot work. And then was kind enough to share the document with us. 
And some people would have heard the story and say, oh, it is too dangerous to, to drop. No, because it will mean that they will, Nigerians will wake up one day and they will see that the president has, has declared that because of uh, the Nam the Kano and Sunday Goku, uh, people's rights will be suspended for some time. Like, you know, like, you know, it, that kind of arrangement. But when we blew it and they saw that it had been exposed, they couldn't proceed with that. With, that memo never was never discussed in case after that. What did they do? They used alternative means to go and abduct Nam the Kano in, in uh, Kenya, you know, and then they also trapped Sunday Goku in Benin. No problem. But the greater danger had been averted, which was to suspend the fifth schedule of the constitution. So we need to know that the media, our role is to watch and say things. We wish we even see more to tell Nigerians, but we only report what we have. But we know how what, what our society is like. We know how much people compromise in the society. We know how much these judges and lawyers, how much they collude. So please, people should, if somebody had come out and reported that governor of a uh, 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 was seen, that they, see, they saw the governor, you know, part collecting dollars in, in bribe from a contractor and putting the dollar in his Babangiga and cap and all over the place. People will not believe they will say it was fake news to cause rancor in the country, to, to degrade the governor. Is it that the governor does not have SSS or D that he could send to collect right or any other people? Why would he put it in his Babangida, Babangida? Is it that he doesn't have uh, Ghana must go? Is it that he cannot buy Ghana must go that he would be putting money in Babangida? But we saw a video of it. It happened. Let's not be, be, be seeing things and we will be, you know. No, it's not done. These people, they do things and they know that there will always be people who will defend them. That is natural. And that is why we are, whenever we want to go to press, we use, we debate stories in our, you know, among the team of editors, you know, seasoned journalists, and we feel that I may be, I may, I may be the managing editor, but I'm not the oldest, I'm not the most experienced of people's results. You know, so, but we all know, we, you see this thing, we look at the law, sometimes we consult our lawyers to let them know that this is going out. You know, they give us legal opinion, they give us, and then we, we blow it. We don't report on the basis of the fact that, oh, some people will not be happy or they will attack us over it. That doesn't form the basis of our story. We know those who are involved know, you know, and then, but we know, but most importantly is that when the public is aware of this matter, this one, you know, this is this is already this one don't cast, you know, <laughs> to use a language, so they will not bother anymore. So that is our own function. That's how we define ourselves. Public interest. CDNs, you know, personal privacy, you I know, mean, safety. Of course, it's, we cannot, we are not going to jeopardize this safety. That story we didn't see it as jeopardizing face because we didn't put the name of the hotel. We we had the name of the hotel because Nigerians in London, we knew that they could bust in, in that place. So we didn't put, we didn't stalk him. We didn't put his, this in there. We didn't even put the picture, his picture at the hotel where he was staying in London. You know, we didn't even put in our story. It was only picture of him in Abuja that came out, not him in London. We didn't in any way, we, look, we didn't jeopardize his safety at all, at all. We only, Sorry. the mission was to report that story and that was what it is. So please I appreciate your position. You asked a fantastic question, but we have our own mission and we felt that what we are doing, you know, ultimately you will see how history or posterity plays out. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Obie. Thank you. Thank you, Obie. Thank you so much. And um, thank you, uh, Samuel. Let's go to Henry. Henry, just a question. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Samuel Ogundikwe. My name is Henry. I'm from, from Germany. I'm coming I'm I'm coming mean, from Germany. I don't have any question for you. I just want to give thank you for opening the eyes of some Nigerians. Because some Nigerians they don't even they should be appreciating the journalists because journalists are the highest of the world under the under the citizens. I have no question for you. Is it not time? I have no question for you at all. I just want to tell you thank you. I want to thank all journalists. What I wanted to say, is it not time for our so-called leader leaders that hold successful uh, offices in Nigeria to make sure they have Medical, good medical system in that country, so that they will be going to medical treatment in Nigeria. 
because I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed seeing so-called uh, medical uh, uh, president select going to UK for medical treatment. I remember Buhari spent more than 100, more, one, more than 100 or something days outside Nigeria. I have not seen that in my life in, in, in the poorest country in Africa, uh, in, in, in Europe. I've been in Germany for more than 20 something years. We know everything that's going on on our, uh, uh, our president, our, mini, uh, uh, our counselor. We know everything about what's going on. We, everything is, is, uh, is, uh, is, is public. He do not have anything negative inside what they are doing. Why are Nigerians from Nigerians crying about this, this publishing? Why are they crying about it? They should right. be thanking journalists to bring things out. I'm not, I, have, I have no question for you. I just want to tell you, thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Much. Thank you. Um, because Nigeria is in pain now. Because Sorry, Mr. Rudo, one minute, please. Because Nigeria is in pain this time. Because we have a, a serious issue about this election that's going on, that, that went on. That is in the court right now, but because everybody is everybody is a suspect, because the so-called uh, uh, CJN is a suspect because we don't know what we're going to do. The Tinubu himself is crying that we don't want him to come to uh, uh, come in on 29th of uh, May. If it's not, if he, if you don't have any uh, in in his, in his cupboard, why is he afraid? Why is he afraid? We knows, everybody knows, you knows, you're a journalist. The election was not free and fair. So I just want to tell you once, once again, thank you. I have no question for you. Nigeria should be happy. We have people who are watchdog to check, check meet all these people we put in the office because we are the we are the uh, employer. We are, we employ these people to work for us because they're using our task pay us money to take care of these people, both the president and all. We have right we have right to check on them. So it's not a crime. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank Henry. you very much. Thank you very much. I mean, uh, Germany, like you said, you know, Germany, all public officials um, are easily held to account because there's transparency. You know, it's not where you could just do anything and you say, oh, this one is, is in this, uh, about the state. You know, no, we have an FY law in Nigeria, but they don't comply. You know, no. even Femi Falano could not get information from the NNPC. If Femi Falano cannot get, if, 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 if the NNPC will not answer Femi Falano, now you tell me who is uh, uh, the NNPC going to be accountable to. You cannot answer anybody, that's what it simply means. We shouldn't be, if you know, if you and I know that this money that is on this table, the whole world is looking at it, the eyes of the world is on the money, we won't touch it. But once the once light goes off, if light goes out, you know, there is darkness, you can quickly say, oh, let me, okay, let me take small. You two, take your own, let me come out. That it shouldn't be. There must be transparency. There must be these people, they are humans. Let's stop thinking that oh, they are not you know susceptible to all forms of things. They are. That's why it must be the system that will check things. You know, don't say that uh, the, the CJN, you know, trying to make a victim out of the CJN. He's number four citizens. I mean, I'm sorry, citizen for crying out loud. He has everything. You know, he has everything. And in any case, we didn't put him. In, in, in jeopardy at all. We only reported what he was up to. And then hurriedly he returned to Nigeria. We gave him like two days advance notice before we reported our story. So he was quickly able to return to Nigeria. But at that meeting has been postponed till another day. And I think we've done our own job. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Let me let me say this for those who are in the studio, please. If you've asked your question, please uh, don't join the studio again, so we can make room for new people to join. Uh, we have about forty something minutes left, and um, you know, if we have opportunity for second round, then you can come back in. But make room for people who want okay. to. Mr. Rudolph, you go put me backstage, or I should go out. Yeah, you should go out. <laughs> go out. You, you go can out. watch. You can watch on uh, on um, on YouTube. So that there will be room in the in the in the uh, studio for people to come in. Uh, oh, oh, all right. Uh, thank you for having me, uh, Rudolph. Um, so, I, I, anytime I turn up, I, of, I often say that I, I wasn't intending to come. And uh, again, I wasn't intending to. I think really not to listen is really not for me to come on because every time I do listen, sometimes I'm so jarred, I feel the need to come on. So as I was listening to your guest, Sam, I had to scroll back about three times to be clear on uh, what I was hearing. And uh, when I was clear on what I was hearing, I was super chatting 
uh, you didn't highlight the super chat, uh, but what I was super chatting is a bit similar to the stanza walk of shame on uh, Game of Thrones. I, I, I'm not sure if you recall that, that scene, stanza's walk of shame on uh, Game of Thrones. They were throwing tomatoes at her and they were saying shame, shame, shame. Uh, so what I was super chatting was fraud, fraud, fraud. So that fraud, of course, pointed in your direction, uh, Sam. So that fraud pointed in your direction. And it is good to put a public face to fake news, by the way. So so at least at least we have a public face for it now. So I, I'm actually speaking to this headline. Uh, CJN Ariwola disguises on wheelchair in London Hotel for secret meeting with Bola Tenobu. By your And I scrolled, scrolled back three times. And by your wording, I, I, because when I first heard it, I was aghast. Aghast. So I scrolled back to be clear that I heard what I what I did here. And by your own admission, you said there was no substance to it. You made it up. I, I am aghast, aghast. So you said the guy was in a wheelchair and that constitutes a disguise, uh, 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 an elderly man that walks with a cane in a wheelchair, having have after a long travel, that constitutes a disguise. You stated categorically that he was in a secret meeting uh, with Tenobu, I read that article, took article about four times when it was first published, and I heard your own word in there. There was no substance to it. The whole totality of that narrative was inferences and innuendos that Tenobu and this guy were in London probably at the same time, and that constitutes a myth. I gasped. I was staggered. The public face of fake news. Uh, but um, you, you know what, what, what really staggered me? Uh, it, it's just how brazenly you do these things. Uh, you know, there was a there was a uh, um, uh, uh, a public advisory published by the DSS just as early as yesterday, cautioning to this space. So my question is to you: uh, Would you? Because I would invite that it does happen. Would you? Would you catch you as surprised when next you land in Nigeria if you are invited to come and defend? Because this is incendiary. This is seditious. What you are doing. And it can cause national chaos. You, uh, I, I'm just. Can you justify what you just did? The public face, I, I say, of All fake right. news. Thank you, thank you, one man. Summer. Yeah, we do respect. But I don't have any response to this kind of person. I'm sorry. So you right. want to move to the next person? Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. I don't thank have you. response to this. Thank you so much, uh, Paul. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, somewhere you just make my day for this uh, this thing that you did now. But one thing that I will give to one man uh, is that uh, it, it baffles me that you didn't even answer his question because one man did not even insult you. Maybe because you're a Yoruba man like him. If you were to be an Igbo man, he would have insulted you. So you will have a you will have a C, but you did you didn't expect the C. I thank you for it. <laughs> you are a journalist. Now, what some of us don't really understand when it comes to journalists, there is a reason why journalists is not in part of government completely. That's why when we say we have three tiers of government, the executive, the legislator, and the judiciary, but they call journalists the watchdog of the society, the fourth frame of the society. They don't take anything from government so that they cannot be biased nor compromised. Thank you for the great work that you are doing. Sometimes some of us don't understand the implication of when leaders travel, it's a big risk for just a colonel in Nigeria to send his kids abroad to go and school. That's a compromise. If I hold a colonel son in America right now, I can compromise whatever he's doing in Meduguri. I can compromise whatever he's doing in South South, in, the, in, in, in Niger Delta. I can compromise him. Because the love, we love our kids. We can't quantify it. We can't explain it. It comes natural. Our kid did not do anything special before we love them. But you see these military men, you see these top government officials, they send their kids to school abroad and they publish their kids while they are playing basketball, while they are in Walmart, while they are in every place. People don't really even understand the implications of what we are doing. Sorry, doctor will fight me. Please talk more about Equity Madu. Thank you. I love you, but I got to go. All right. So... Samuel Ekwaramadi, do you have any answer, any anything to say about Ekwaramadi? Um, I mean, it's it's Ekwaramadi's um, situation. I think um, has been has been uh, properly adjudicated, and you know he was 
um, accused of um, wrongdoing and then convicted um, afterwards. Um, initially, when we, uh, you know, there was a mix up initially with the information that came up was that the person was a minor, you know, who was um, taken to the UK. And then we later saw his passport and, you know, saw that the criminal in fact wrote the the Nigeria, I mean, the, the, the British uh, embassy, the high commission in Abuja saying, disclosing specifically um, that um, the name of the, 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 the young man and, and also saying that specifically he was going, taking him to the UK to donate to his uh, son. So as far as process, you know, it looked, everything looked properly done you know, for a Nigerian politician in the way Ikurimadu handled, handled that issue. You know, what was, what became unfortunate and what did him, him unfortunately, was the path where he was seen, you know, evidence apparently, um, to have offered money, you know, cash monetary compensation to the victim, to the, uh, um, Okay, well, if you can call him a victim now, right? It's, it's, it's the case I've been dispensing court. So to the victim, you know. So um, that was what caused the issue. You know, that was what caused the issue. Ordinarily, he, he went through the process. You know, he was transparent. He didn't lie. In, at least the documents we reviewed on this matter. But he offered monetary, which was against the law in the United Kingdom. You know, you could gets kidney transplant from anybody as long as it works. Unfortunately, you cannot offer to give that person, to compensate that person for giving you the kidney. You know, that's where it became illegal. And apparently that was the path that the Kurima do, you know, team, you know, the lawyers and, you know, advisors on the entire process, you know, didn't, uh, that was a loophole, you know, that they unfortunately didn't catch, you know, before setting off the process. So what this has told us, of course, as many of us have seen, is that it's a different, because this in Nigeria, of course, we all said it wouldn't even have gone to court to begin with, right? You know, because that particular uh, compensation helping, you know, the, the, the gentleman, you know, to make his life better after donating kidney to your, to, 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 to his daughter, right? Would have been seen, you know, in fact, by some Nigerian court, you know, as an act of virtue, you know, they, that, that was how they would have seen it. But in the United Kingdom, where different, you know, rules uh, apply, you know, they said, you know, we violated our law, and as such, you know, we were convicted and they did. So it, it went through the legal process. I think he also recognized the error that he made. It was an error, but sadly, because it's a, it's a you know, I mean, I'm a father of, you know, of a two-year-old son. Um, and and I could yeah, I could just imagine, you know how uh, um, how worried, how disorganized, right? I would be how desperate, you know, I would be if I must, you know, find myself in this situation. What I will be looking for is situation. I mean, is is a way out, you know, is a way out. I am not going. I will be the last thing. We probably maybe I will go to jail down the line. Will not be in my mind. As long as I properly, I go through the law, I would think that I've been through the law, I've done every process, everything was legally done, you know, but the path of compensation is something that any of us would have fallen for. Because I can't imagine somebody donating a kidney, right, to my child, and then I would abandon that person. No, I would definitely have to ensure that I take care of that person, as long as that person would need my help for the rest of that person's life, as long as I'm also in a position to help that person. You know, but it's against the law in the UK, and that's what we have. So, All it's right. a question you. Too, quite frankly. Thank you, thank you, Samuel. Uh, let's go to Buddy. Buddy, uh, yeah. Dennis. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, yeah. Samuel, uh, can you recall the headline of that publication again? The news that you broke on the CJ, can you record the headline? Absolutely. Okay. And again, the next question will be, can you define the word disguise? Okay, hold on, hold on, buddy. Buddy, um, because we don't want uh, one one question for everybody, no matter how you frame it. So frame it, your question as well. Okay, 
Uh, because okay. we are not here for you know so okay uh, the next question the qu my question will be can you define the word disguise and that will be your only question because no that's not no question. then you have to one question please buddy, buddy. okay and uh my doubts stem from the timelines if you can like reel out the timelines of uh, cgn travel itineraries and president-elect travel itineraries and the doubt was stemming from the fact that You've broken certain stories in the past, like on the one on Ibe Kachuku that you said you stole a car from UK and shipped the car down to US. We've had issue of that. And then there's a story you broke on Oshibaju, whereby you attended an event in 2021 in Abuja, whereby you publish a story and they completely debunk it. And another thing that I have to tell you this afternoon is that you talk about the fixed schedule. It's not Malami that will be the first person that will suggest to the president to suspend this fish schedule. I could remember vividly if you have a volume of event in 2015, if anybody came over to government, Barisa Femi Falana suggested it that if you want to fight crime really hard in Nigeria, we have to suspend this fish schedule. So there are always many suggestions about it concerning our country. Thank you, Aid. Okay, right, thank you. Yeah, I'll take the last question first. Um, I mean, I don't remember Falano, Falano, you know, advocating um, the suspension of, you know, rights um, in Nigeria because the Falano that we all know is, a, you know, is a rights person. He has spent his life, you know, um, fighting for the rights of Nigerians. I recognize Falano. Falano and I are, you know, very close as far as a reporter and then a senior lawyer like himself, um, you know, goes. Um, other than that, I may not be able to speak to spe the specifics of what he, he advocated, but it's possible for him to say that, look, to fight, you know, uh, corruption, some people, um, you know, have to know that they can't just take Nigeria, steal Nigeria's money and then enjoy it hiding under, um, you know, right statutes and all that. It's possible that he might have done that. I'm not disputing what you said. However, I can't speak to the specifics of what he said, but I can speak to the fact that Falano is a right personality and he very, very much um, celebrated globally for his life for, for that. So um, that's that. Um, as to the question, um, you know, about, about um, the stories, you know, the, that, we, that we ran, you mentioned two stories. I'm very happy that you were able to cite specifics. That's what we like. When you want to say that, oh, people get there to publish fake news, the other character um, said that, you know, this is the fake of, face of fake news, you know, but unfortunately you didn't cite any example. But you cited examples. That's what I want. You mentioned two specific stories. One, you said that we reported um, Ibi Kachuku that, you know, you may want to, do you want to pull up the headline? We said that it was a stolen vehicle. We didn't say it was the one who stole it. Do you want to pull it? You may just Google as I'm talking and you'll see we didn't say he stole vehicle. We said he bought a vehicle. FBI, we reported FBI court documents, which anybody interested here, you know, will see it from our story. It is the FBI that said that a vehicle, a Jaguar vehicle, you know, was stolen, right? And then from the UK and sent to Long Beach in California. It was there. It was after it was sent, you know, during the not anyway, the, uh, the man, Ibe Kachuku, bought the vehicle. They found the vehicle in his possession. And they said this vehicle was stolen. And then they sought the forfeiture of the vehicle. The vehicle was forfeited. So he then said that it was a man, a dealer, a, a dealer in Victoria Island that sold the vehicle to him, that he didn't know that it was a stolen vehicle. We didn't say he stole it. It happens to Nigerians every day. Most of the vehicles that they are vehicles stolen from abroad, they will bring to Nigeria and they will sell to you. You won't know. Sometimes they even, you know, manipulate the uh, the V, the 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 the, the, the VIN, yeah, I mean, sorry, the the mileage of the vehicle. They roll it backwards, right? Meanwhile, in the United States, using Carfax and some other. Uh, 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 resource tools, you could actually check history of a vehicle that came out of the United States. You know, I have seen a vehicle, there was a vehicle we wanted to buy, you know, a fairly used vehicle, we wanted to buy from one of our dealers, you know, in Abuja for office, office, you know, for office use. And when we checked the VIN, 
it didn't correlate with the mass reported mileage of the vehicle just earlier this year. It didn't correlate with what, what, what we saw in Abuja. Clearly, it had been manipulated. They, they rolled it back. So people do it like that. People steal vehicles from abroad and then they take to Nigeria and then they sell. That was what we reported. We never slept and we didn't accuse, we report, and it was an FBI full US government court government document. Not from us. That was that. The last part that you mentioned was actually quite fantastic and it goes deep into our journalism as people get that. It is true that we reported that the vice president was involved in an accident. That is the story you are talking about in Abuja. He wasn't involved in an accident. We heard in that story. What happened was that we saw, we were sent a video in which crowd gathered. What the, the person speaking in the video was shouting, oh, you know, was panting, and then said that, oh, vice president, so it's vice president, you know, Shiba Joe. Unfortunately, we didn't know from the context of how our reporters and the editor that unfortunately passed the story was that the person was panicking about the accident itself and then saying that vice president was among the rescuers, not that he was among, he was a victim of the crash itself. So the vice president intervened, he was on his way to the airport. He stopped his convoy to do a very good service to the nation you know, by saying that let's quickly use the ambulance, you know, not in the, to, to take, in his convoy, to take the, first, the victims to the hospital. So he didn't just order that. He got down from his own vehicle and helped victims. That's how a leader does. That's how a leader behaves. You know, that was what the vice president, unfortunately, we made our error and immediately we realized our error within a few minutes after publishing that story. We retracted. We retracted immediately and we published our retraction to Nigerians. We didn't just delete the story and keep quiet. You will see it on our site. We, we, we published editor's notes fully, and then we, put, we distributed the notes to all our handles. That's how we do at People's Gazette. We don't mind people, all those who are attacking us, oh, fake news, you should have checked your story better. No problem, it is true. We could have done a better job. But unfortunately, in this particular story you cited, we failed at that job and we took responsibility and we retracted, which is what any media institution in the world, any media institution in the world, no matter how big, you know, will also do. They make mistakes every day and they publish retraction every day. It happens. In our own case, in this particular instance, we failed and we owned up to our error and we retracted. So you, can hold us to account for that error, but the fact is that you know we didn't we didn't hide away from that responsibility of our own failure. So I appreciate that you mentioned this. It's very specific, you know, and I appreciate that you mentioned it. But we took the measure that any organization, any responsible media organization, would take. And also, you have to pay attention to our stories. If we make any retraction, we publicly say. We don't hide, we don't delete story that people gazette. We started publishing September 25. I'm saying this in a public forum. People gazette launched on September 25, 2020. We have published thousands of stories since then. You can get any CMS expert in the world to audit our website. You will never find us having deleted a single story. We don't. Many other websites including those that all of you know, when they publish a fake story, you know, they, what do they do? A story that is er, you know, an erroneous story, not necessarily fake, because saying fake means that they deliberately publish it. No, they might they make mistakes. But rather than own up in the manner that we did, they just go to their, they just delete the story from their Twitter, Facebook, you know, feeds, and also delete from their website, and then they keep quiet. We don't do that here. We retract our people's given. I will give you another instance. Earlier this year, we reported that the CBN governor, Godwin Emefi, uh, was at a meeting in Abuja, you know, with Malami, Boss Mustafa, and others. It was an error. We, it, my, the man was not at that meeting, but the meeting held. Those people were there, but the, our sources, you know, did not see 
that it wasn't a mystery. And we checked well, the person's back and everything looked like it, it wasn't a mystery. In any case, we immediately retracted that story. Meanwhile, earlier that day, and we, we, and we retracted because we saw evidence that immediately was still abroad as of that time. The CBN showed us clear evidence, verified evidence that Emifile was in London as of the time we reported our story that he was in Abuja. So we retracted. Now, a media that is far bigger than us, which I don't necessarily need to mention, so that it doesn't seem like we are castigating anybody, reported earlier in the day that Emifile was in Abuja, was back in Abuja. That story to, to now, that media has not taken that story down. It was false. And maybe they only came back to the country two days after, and also two days after our own story, but we retracted. So to say that we don't make mistakes at people's gazette is false. We make errors. We really make errors, but we do make errors. And we always own up to our errors so that Nigerians will see you know, that this was an error. This was what led to the error. And then we will do what? It will clarify. So thank you very much for for raising this. You know, but we don't we don't we don't. The first question you didn't answer me. The first question. The first question you asked about these guys, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that I should define what it means to these guys. That was what you asked, right? That what you see the situation where you whereby you find the CDN. Does that constitute a disguise by your own definition? No, 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 no. Listen, to... listen again, listen again, listen again. His disguise, you understand, was not necessarily that the only thing, the picture that of, out of the airport. You know, we said that this man, immediately after he got to the hotel, he started walking briskly over the, all over the places. Why is that? How do you, if you see somebody using, holding a stick, right, walking, walking to your place, and then immediately that person got inside when, you know, thinking that, you know, he's no longer being seen by some people that ordinarily he was, he didn't want to. Then he started walking briskly and smart. And you are going to, he started, not, not this guy. This guy does not mean that we didn't say that he was in hook. Read our story again. We never said anywhere in our story that, oh, he put on a mask to cover his head. When, no, we said that he was on a wheelchair, pushed through the terminals. That was what we reported. And that when he got to London, he did the same thing to the hotel. And immediately he got down, he started using, you know, moving around by himself, no seat and everything. And the picture we have, this is based on what we have seen, that this man was moving by himself without any, he was on edit. And that we stand by it. You know, your definition may be that for somebody to disguise, the person has to put on a hood that you cannot see the person's face or the person must wear a military camouflage. That is not necessarily what this guy means. This guy simply means, you know, you try to pretend in a way that people may not immediately be able to recognize you. You know, right. if you are going, if you are going anywhere, you know, ordinarily you are not going to expect that the person on that wheelchair is the number four citizen of the country. You know, I, I know I know Rudolph, and I would I'm not going to be walking at the terminal at the airport and I will say, oh, because somebody on the wheelchair is doctor. I'm not going to do that because I, 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 it won't occur to me, even though it might be me, but it won't occur to me. So therefore, when you move like that, you know, and then in the manner, the entire thing was highly suspicious and it was on the basis of suspicion. That suspicion was what we reported and it could be there, there could be an inquiry in a serious country. There will be an inquiry that will either clear the CJN or say that ah, the CJN, even that your movement, the CJN's movement was truly you know, suspicious, and it should not have done that. And then they will put in a better process, you know, to guarantee, you know, accountability and openness, transparency, so that whenever the CDN is traveling, everything is disclosed, right? If everything is disclosed, proactive disclosure, there will be no issue. You know, there will be no issue at all, no question to be asked, because everything was disclosed. You know, that's what we should do. So that's, that's just the basis of all this. Thank you very much for your question again, buddy. All right, thanks, uh, buddy. Thank you so much. Uh, but let me just say that uh, buddy sneaked in three questions as one, and um, I, I won't let that happen again. Yeah, actually, actually, his questions, I, I, I must admit, his questions were 
you know, they were, they, were, they were specific questions and I think they were questions to be addressed. So, so I think I'm very fine by the way. Okay, um, great. Yes, question. Even though it's question might be adversarial, but they are very critical questions and I'm happy to answer them. All right. So I thank I thank you. And and for those who are watching, if you can help us like this video, uh, it helps for YouTube to show it to more people. Uh Suleiman, welcome to the show and um you're on. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um thank you, Samuel. Um, Dr. Damages, you guys are doing an awesome job. I mean, for our democracy to improve, the, the conversations have to be upped, they have to be improved, and so uh, people can get to understand a whole lot of things. No. Uh, you you could see that uh, Buhari was able to survive a whole lot of the things that that Jonathan couldn't have survived, you know, owing to the nature of this us versus them narrative in the country. So, if you look at what's going on right now with this whole activities about the CGN and everything, and the whole post-election matters, you see that it's become more like an affair of certain groups down south you know between two groups down south the north is doing more more of a still don't look on the matter you know so now um talking about these things you're doing somewhere you would see that the whole thing you're doing as objective as it could be and why the citizens should have interest about it but you see that maybe it's become more like certain tribe only supporting you, your work that you're doing about these matters and some other tribe that's your own tribe the one you belong to are probably even looking at you from some type of way right now so <laughs> how, how are you able to really handle all of this and and what's what's the effect of 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 what we're doing now i mean this thing we're doing as objective as to be to the development of nigeria considering how i give an example of how Bahai was able to survive a whole lot even when he shouldn't thank you so much thank, thank you very you. much yeah thank you uh, you know the i mean the contrast um really is around jonathan you know was I'm a reporter, and I'm very grateful for the FY that Jonathan signed into law, no doubt. Um, unfortunately, he was not in office long enough for us to be able to have a best eye view of how the FY performed under him compared to Buhari. Buhari has had eight full years now so we can tell very well that buhari's government is a terribly close government and this is the first review of the fy that we can have you know there is no hope for foi under buhari so far we hope we pray that sinubu will be different you know just for the interest of nigeria any foi we file any lawsuit that our lawyers are pursuing you know in the towards the fy you know, it's for the Nigerian people. We are not going to get any document through FOI and then we will sit on such documents. No, the public, so we are asking for the documents on behalf of the state of Nigerians, you know, to report that this is the information. You know, that's that. As to how Buhari, you know, was it? Buhari is close, right? And the media substantially in the country you know, by virtue of some of the personalities behind the media organization, mm -hmm. you know, you find out that they are of advanced age, right? And they've made friends over decades. And many of their friends are now in government. And that, you know, put them in a sort of quandary. You know, it puts the, it makes it difficult for them to do their work. Imagine you are doing your work, and some your, your friend is calling you. Ah, you are yeah, not happy you, because you don't want to be seen to be antagonizing your friend because your friend will be accusing you of trying to destroy that government. All those things they are susceptible to you, and that is why you know we keep saying that. Look, we have the NTA, right? We have now. We have so many red FRCN, right? People's Gazette does not have the audience of the NCA and Radio Nigeria. 
So why don't you leave? And then they are funded by the taxpayers. So why don't you leave the business of covering the government, trying to protect the government and all that to those ones? That is what they are supposed to be doing. You, as an independent media organization, your primary concern is to expose wrongdoing in public service. Is to make sure that there's no hiding place for people doing wrong in government. Leave the PR job, like the job of that, you know, uh, all those TV stations that, that they were doing for, uh, what was it, the Chief Justice the other day, airing the video, saying that the Chief Justice, right, uh, was seen at the mosque praying amid speculation. That's, 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 that's. Look, it was wrong. I mean, speculation that he was abroad. He didn't say, the man was actually abroad. He just came back. You know, leave the NTA to do such job. You are an independent media. Don't do it. That is the way to hold the president or any administration to account. Jonathan, in his own term, you know, he was held to account to a large extent. You know, thank to child reporters and all that. You know, they were very much out there and then trying to, we were not there at the time. We were, we only came in 2020, barely two years ago. So definitely we were not there, but we knew how much uh, Sarah reporters put Jonathan's feet to fire. That is the way. We didn't, we are nobody is saying here that Sarah reporters was perfect. I am not going to sit there, sit here as the managing editor of People's Gazette and tell you that People's Gazette is perfect. But, but overall, our reporting is towards what we are supposed to be doing, holding them to account. They are not their PR people. They have all sorts of spokespersons, all sorts. Billions of Naira budgeted every year towards their media. And then you will still be an independent media and be carrying water for them. How is that supposed to make a society work? So Jonathan did his own. Buhari got too much of a part for me. And I'm not, um, you know, I'm telling you, my colleagues, you know, really, really, they know it. They know my position on this matter. You know, nobody is against Buhari. He's our president. Let him do his job. Let us do our job. That's the way society works. Like you have said, there's judiciary, there's the executive, there's the parliament. Even within government, you have three different distinct arms doing different jobs. So the media has its own role, a totally different role to play, and it was they are now to play. Buhari did not allow media, and that is sad. As to my colleagues, I mean, all my, you know, I don't know, my compatriots of Yoruba origin like myself, who might be, you know, looking or implying whatever they want to imply about me. Like you have said, this conversation, the, the pattern, you know, seems to be like, oh, uh, people from other parts of the country are saying that, you know, people get, commending people do their work, while people from, you know, my tribe and Tinubu are seeing it differently. You know, but we welcome criticism. That's the only way we can get better. There's no doubt about that. You know, but we just want people to follow our reporting as people give it, to ignore those who are saying, oh, fake news. No, follow us. They, they, they made the mistake here. Did they correct themselves? Did they own up to the mistake? How many mistakes did they make in a year? How many mistakes do Media organizations, the BBC or you know Sky or you know the New York Times or the CBS or all sorts. How many mistakes did they make in a year? Do they correct as well? People's Gazette also corrects. That's it. We don't. We really make mistakes, but we are not going to say that we don't do it at all because we are human and we would forever be human. And as long as we are human, we cannot in our life, you know, escape, you know, nature which is the fact that you will err at a point, you know, in your career. What you should more, must just pray is that it is not too consequential, you know, and that you are able to recover. That is it. So thank All you right. very much for your question. And, and, and you know, it's just the way it is. Thank you. Thank you, Suleiman. Let me, let me just say we have about 20 minutes left. Uh, we booked him for three hours, and three hours is a long time for an editor to be away from on the phone. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. So um, we have to be quick in terms of uh, questions. Just go straight to your question and uh, Mark, you are next. Yeah, hello. 
Good uh, good afternoon, everybody, or good evening, UK time. It is. <laughs> so um, I was so happy yesterday when they said that uh, somebody come in who can shed more light on this so-called ghost meeting or secret meeting. There were a couple of talkers before that were talking about the issue. Um, I just wanted to add that uh, if someone who you cannot get anybody higher than him in terms of law, law in the whole of Nigeria, and a president, president elect who is known to be a little bit fishy, suddenly disappear, and then the other guy is saying, oh, it's because of security reasons that uh, they didn't say so, that's why he went abroad. The whole illegal something about it is, if it is true, the meeting, and then it, it, the whole of the meeting is uh, because of right, that is what the whole issue is. That is uh, that is unfortunately too bad. So the other guy trying to defend, say, oh, it's a security reason, we're going to put his life at risk. Okay, hold on, hold on, Matt, 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 there's a lot of noise where you are, and you are not helping us by going straight to your question. Um, if if you just go straight to your question, uh, we, we can go from there, OK? No, no need to give this background. Go ahead, go ahead, it's your question. OK, yeah, yeah. So uh, what I was saying is, uh, is there any more information? You're like a journalist, I believe. Do you have any more information about the authentication of the meeting uh, or details of the meeting? Because I am worried. If the meeting went on and it's true, then I think uh, you can forget about the case in court, <laughs> if you ask me. So that's my question. No, 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 no. no the, the, the... The meeting, the meeting, the meeting didn't hold. Um, to the best of our knowledge, um, the meeting was preempted, and the Chief Justice, um, you know, currently had to return to Nigeria. Um, and so far, from indications, um, the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice is in Nigeria. Um, and we also don't think that there will, there will be, you know, there, there's going to be a confusion now. Who is going to initiate conversation between the team of the? Um, All right, uh, Samuel, I think here. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's from your end, I believe. Okay, we are, I'm sorry. Yes, um, my my, I was switching my airports. Okay. Um, so so I was basically saying that the meeting did not hold um, to the best of our knowledge. It was preempted. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to butt in. Uh, what's the authentication that the meeting did not hold? Uh, I said, no, no, I said to the best of our knowledge, to the best of our knowledge, we preempted the meeting. We preempted the meeting to the best of our knowledge. We and, and that is authentic. Now, it's 100% sure. I'm sorry? It's 100% sure that this meeting did not hold. No, to the best. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, is not a hundred okay. percent assurance. It is that we okay. are a media organization. We can only come to the public to say yeah, that yeah, this yeah. is what we have. It might not be complete, but we will say this is what we have at this time, so that you know that as we know, you also know. If we have yeah. updates, you know, you would also you are also entitled to the updates that we have. What we will yeah. not do, you know, is to come to the Nigerian people, you know, and publicly for the kind of organization that we run. You know, for us to come and say that this thing has happened, or there are chances of this thing happening when we have not gotten enough evidence, enough facts, you know, to yeah. come to the public with any information, any information at all, anything at all. You know, if you see it on people's gazette, just know that we might we have been working on that thing for a while because we know very well that the public will hold us to account for anything we do. You know, yeah. and then we are not going to take the public for granted in terms of information to the public domain. So now the question you ask is that the meeting, if it happened, would have been extremely consequential. You are right, especially when it was in secret. But to the best of our knowledge, we got the information, we we, we, we informed the Supreme Court and the National Judicial Council two days before we reported the story. So that gave the Chief Justice enough time 
to return to Nigeria. So that was why our reporting the story coincided with him returning to Nigeria, you know, just hours apart, you know. Mm -hmm. But that story was something that we worked on and had at least two meetings of editors, you know, over to pull through the, 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 the holes, you know, in it and then make sure that everything is properly neat. And even the sources were frustrated at one point. This thing, that's how hard it can be. It's not like we don't mm -hmm. trust the sources, but we also have to make sure that this thing is going to the public. So we have to make sure that we've done our checks. So Tsinubu yeah. and the man, you know, were planning to meet. They wanted to meet. That was why the man was in England. Right, but we blew the thing out. That was messed up, so they couldn't do anything to the best of our knowledge, right. you know. Right. But we are not guaranteeing again, we are not guaranteeing that they didn't meet. But at least the public know now, the public is very much aware now that either the meeting held or it didn't hold. There was a communication was established between the CJN and the Tinubu you know, to have whatever yeah. discussion they wanted to, to have. And Nigerians definitely, no matter how much anyone wants to say, Nigerians are entitled to know that information and then use it, you know, the way they want to use it. Maybe they will keep it for now and then wait until some things will unfold in future and then be able mm -hmm. to add one or two things together or not. Yeah. But it's, at least it's just communication... That the Nigerian people have it. All right. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Mark, thank you so much. We have to stop it ending here. Uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, Chooks, you're next. Oh, all right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you wanted to cut me off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Samuel, for the great job. You know, um, you know sometimes uh, we Nigerians, we, we think we are educated and uh, something is missing in our education. The job of media is to hold the government accountable and to educate the public. And that is what you have done. So for those who come here to divide Nigeria into three, one is sitting down watching, one is on your side, the other who is supposed to be on your side is not on your side. Just don't mind all those things. No, this no, is no. the, well, this is the reason why watching. Nigeria is not growing. No, he's part of this meeting and I'm happy he was able to join from the North. It's part of the yeah. meeting. And no, he said the North. Yeah, okay, I said, let me say it as but, he's, but he, he, he phrased it. He was noticing the pattern of the conversation. Yeah, yeah he, said, he, said, he said the North was sitting and watching. You know, and this, that statement is why Nigeria is not growing. And, uh, you know, I, I, I leave it for him to, to digest. Yeah, um, you, <laughs> you, no, no, uh, you met. I, I, I will carry his water here with due respect. I think he's not. Speaking in that manner, he was noticing the pattern of the conversation, you know, between yeah, the, the yeah, but he, he is from the north. If, if he if he just in the conversation <laughs> that that's that they are not sitting and waiting, you know, and watching. Sorry, yeah. That's um, it. my question is, um, you know, you said you gave um uh, the um the court the Nigerian judiciary two days before you reported. Uh, my question there is, is there um um you know kind of um constitution that says you must do that or you just do it did it out of respect you know uh, okay. yeah that's my question well, thank you very much thank you very much um uh, you know journalism you, are, you know things are unfolding you know people are having different um definitions you know debates are raging about how journalists should process stories before coming to the public, right? Um, at People's Gazette, we are still somehow married to the traditional way of reporting, which is, you might be a digital you know, um, outlet, but we are still married to the traditional ethics. If you are going to report a story at People's Gazette, you must, if anybody is accused of something, you must reach that person to get that person to explain themselves to you so that you will add the person's explanation. You already have your facts, you get, but you still hear from that person so that the person can tell you that, uh, well, even though you have your facts, this is what happened, this is why I did this, to justify what they did. 
which is still part of trying to hold someone to account, justify what they did. And then, okay. you, add it, and then you add it to your story. So it's yeah, if like you don't mind add, it's me just, adding this. It's add. just basic ethics. You reach the person for comments to say, this is what we found out. We said, first of all, you are the spokesman for the Supreme Court. You are the director of communication. We understand that the Chief Justice of the Federation, Kyle Diariwola, is in London as we speak. And he is planning to meet President elect Bola Tinubu. Might you be able to account to explain to us why the Chief Justice is in London? That's all. We asked that question. And Festus Akonde for two days failed to answer us. He, when we got him, he quickly, he, he, had, he had the question again and he just um, eased and then abruptly hung up the call. Right? That's first of all, the, the Director of Supreme Court Communication. NJC, which is the National Judicial Council. So we didn't stop at the Supreme Court. We also went to the NJC. So you have both, both, those are the two institutions that you could ask such a question. You know, we also asked the NJC the same question. And then the NJC said, we don't know what, how to answer about the, Supreme, the Chief Justice's uh, uh, you know, whereabouts, and that the question should be directed back to the Supreme Court. So we felt that since none of the two institutions will speak, we have done our own. We will go to press to let Nigerian people know. And that was what we did. Now, the reason why we always reach people for comment is because somebody might give us information, right? And that person, you know, might not be accurate. You know, and the person will say, oh, this person has done this and that, you know, and it's, I mean, it happens all the time. The, over the past week, you know, we had to go to, you know, our reporters had to go to ministries to meet ministers, to meet uh, uh, heads of agencies, to ask them questions personally, because they said that, come to our office, come and hear from our own side. And we had to delay stories just so that we get to communicate with them. Ordinarily, we'll say, oh, well, we asked you over the phone. Why, you not Why can't you tell us? No, we would delay the story and then spend our own resources to go to their offices and meet them just because we want to be fair to them. Anybody that we are writing anything about, we must be fair to that person. We don't prosecute people. We don't persecute people. We don't report in a manner that is, you know, you know, prosecutorial or that, oh, yeah, this person is wrong. You know, so no, that's not how we approach it, approach things. We give the person the, you know, we know that you will always have an explanation for any action that you take, and we will allow you to explain so that it goes with the story that we are publishing. It is balanced and it must we must be fair. So that is why we do it. Because in some cases, you have a story, and by the time you reach that party, you will find out that it's a totally different board game. It's going to change the entire, you know, spin, slant of your story. Because that other person will submit documents proving categorically that the information you were initially given was wrong. Now, the way the media works is that if somebody says something like that and the information is not readily in the public domain, and you fail to cooperate with the reporter to clarify your own role with evidence, the reporter will have no choice but to go to the public with the information that the reporter has been able to gather. For example, if there is a story that, oh, see these documents, accusing somebody of wrongdoing, you have that, right? You have seen the document. But meanwhile, there's another document showing that that person was cleared of that wrongdoing. Was cleared of that wrongdoing. Now, if you go, if you want, before you go to press, if you ask the other person for comments, and the person tells you, fails to give you, you know, comment to show evidence that exculpates him or her, right? You will go to the public saying that that person was accused of wrongdoing. But you, will, but you don't know whether the person was cleared. So you are not going to put that in your story. 
Meanwhile, if that person has shown you evidence that they were cleared of that wrongdoing, you know that you will have to reconsider your story, right? Because that person was cleared. It will be unfair for somebody who has been cleared of an offense, you know, to still be vilified in the media space. So that is why I said that media, we just report what we have. We are not prosecutors. If the matter had gone to court, then the other person will know that there's something higher, bigger at stake, you know, that he might go to jail, which means that he will produce the document, right, that exonerates him or her in court. So that's why court is different from the media. Media will raise alarm when we see. It might be wrong, there might be wrongdoing, there will be no wrongdoing, but at least we let the public know. But at least even the alarm, we must always make sure that there is a basis for that alarm to be raised and not just, you know, raising alarm just for the sake of it. That is frivolous and that is dangerous in journalism. You don't do that if it's irresponsible and it should never be for any media, any serious media organization. You must have a basis to take it to the public before you take it to the public. All right, thank you. Thank you, um, Samuel. Uh, we 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 are we run out of time. It's three three hours. So what we're going to do? We we'll try to take the people who are already in the studio. I yeah. hope some of you can do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll try. I'm, I'm, okay. All right. So, uh, Mahicho, you're next. Hey, thank you. Somewhere I want to sincerely say thank you. Thank you for seeing the truth and letting us know the truth. Thank you for not playing the game of tribe when we need the truth to deliver ourselves from this mess. May the good Lord keep you. Amen. May the good Lord uphold you. May the good Lord straighten you. Because we must, we must get out of this. And it's going to take courageous men like you to stand with us to get out of this. My name is Mama Hecho, as the popular call me in the social media space. But my real name is Hannah Obukoho. I am the convener of Anne Diamond Go Charitable Organization in Nigeria and Anne Diamond Go Charity in the US. And by the grace of God, we are working on, or we are, the CEO of ABG Sport Academy Limited. And by his grace, we shall become the CEO of ADG Set very soon. ADG Set stands for Showbiz, Entertainment, Tourism, and Hospitality. Because our goal it's not to continue to jump people to complain. Our goal is to turn the word of the nation that they have turned to Yahoo Yahoo boys and girls, that they have turned to hook up and unlocious, that they have turned to kidnap and Fulani Hesmen. We want to build a life out of them because the human capital of the nation it is the word of the nation. Like I call them my children. I will not join them to destroy them. And I thank you for the role you are playing. At least I have another show where to work with me. Because one of the things we must do, all our stolen work that are stuck in the Western world, in form of bad accounts, in form of properties, in form of company. We will look for them and bring them back home so that we can use it to remove my children the condition to be on the street that they turn to Abel or talk. We want to remove them. So we will need those resources. So we want to work with you. We want to work with Sahara Reporter. So I'm here to just say thank you. I will be leaving my phone number behind. I want your number. We must work together. Together, we shall rescue our nature and build a new Nigeria and leave a better legacy for our children, 
and our children, children. Thank you, sir. And before I leave, we are more than 900 in this place. Everybody, even on a one dollar, buy a sticker. Buy a sticker because this one is a bomb share. So we must buy a sticker to say thank you to Dr. Damages. Thank you to Samuel. And if, if somebody like uh, one man that is so hungry, anguish, and he give us a new English language he just learned in school today, can buy a sticker to demonstrate the anguish. All of you that are happy, buy a sticker. If you not buy a sticker, next Saturday, you know they call this one for me. Everybody buy a sticker. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama Echo. Thank you, Mama Echo. Uh, good afternoon, Samo. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon. Um, so quickly, I am. I'm just glad that um, in the midst of this uh, craziness, whereby uh, we have tribalism playing a part in everything, especially nowadays. I'm glad that you're Yoruba, and I'm Yoruba as well. The reason why I bring this up is because I am curious to know what your opinion opinion is in the midst of. Uh, our, already, it's hard enough to be a journalist. How hard is your job right now as a Yoruba man as I am in trying to do your job and being called all kind of names by people that are the, of the same distance as us? For example, myself and yourself, the same ethnicity. Who think, I mean, they use all kind of names I can't even like, um, I can't uh, validate here. You know what I'm talking about. And it's annoying because um, it's difficult for you to, to, uh, to, um, to like discuss with people when all they see is you go, go to fall in line only because you're Yoruba, rather than to see fairness for what it is and report it as it is irrespective of tribe, religion, or race. How hard is your job at this time? Thank you, Femi. Um, thank you very much, um, um, Femi. Um, you, you know, um, I've always been somebody that um, it has nothing to do with ethnicity. I, I don't. I really don't um, understand why, you know, why we still have this. It's still a feature, right? Unfortunately, uh, uh, I'm so, so sorry. Yeah, I'm, it's still a feature of our um, society, you know, um, this issue of tribalism and everything. I, from 2020, after we started People's Gazette, a couple of weeks later, we started reporting Court, do, I mean, bank documents from Lagos State government. How Lagos State government transferred money into Alpha Beta accounts. Alpha Beta moved the money into a firm called Ocean Trust, right? Which is a fictitious um, 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 onshore shell firm in which the, the company does not exist. It only exists on paper. The address is in the for that for the office that were, you know, addresses in the court documents, you know, the addresses, they, they, they don't exist, right? So it's a, it's a fictitious company. So Alpha Beta moved the money into that account. And then from the Ocean Trust, you can see how monies were going into Tinubu's family members, you know, Lubumifinu, Tinubu, and all of all the rest. Um, moving into um, um, TVC, that is TV Continental, which is owned by Tinubu, moving into Vintage Press, which publishes the Nation newspaper, and other interests of Bola Tinubu, right? That's how the money was flowing. So you can clearly trace money from Lagos going into Tinubu's pockets, unchallenged. So when we started publishing the document, the feedback then, because they, I mean, Tinubu's people knew that he was going to run for president. So they started attacking. They started coming to me personally. The, you know, you want to derail the Yoruba agenda, this and that. I was like, did I sit somewhere with you and I told you that Bola Tinubu is my agenda? I don't understand it. He's a Nigerian. If the law, if the law says he's entitled to run for president, by all means, but to now say that my journalism will be clouded by there's such primordial, it's an insult to me, personally. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, but since that year is the same thing we've been facing. Up, when, we, when we dropped the video of him 
uh, at the Audalia Palace, you know, urinating on it. It was the the my phone was it was crazy that day for me. You know, the things that people say about I don't, for, I don't understand why it's that way, but it's still a feature. And I hope, you know, however it's going to be, you know, we can find a way out of this. We can move from this. We can move from this. A man from Marochuku who is my president, I will hold him to account. You have to be responsible when you are the president of Nigeria. If you are from Potiskum, I don't care. I am a reporter. You just have to be responsible. So it doesn't matter whether you are from Ijebu like me or from my hometown. You know, if you are my uncle and you become president, and I am still a reporter, I have not left the I have not left this profession. You will be held to account. It is simple. So these things, I really get them a lot. Quite frankly, I get them a lot. I must. I can't come and be lying publicly. I get them a lot, but I don't. I don't care. And I must be very, I must, I mean, I'm also very, very happy, you know, very, very happy, you know, about the fact that, um, you know, my editors, my report, you know, reporters in our organization, to our admin staff, we are all, you know, we don't, ethnicity, you know, religion, you know, they all have no place to play in our organization, you know, just our job and that's what we'll continue uh, to do. So that's just the point. But yeah, it can be very, very bad. I mean, from, from when, you know, Buhari and all of them, um, SSS coming after me and um, the police arresting me and all the, you know, all those things that I've suffered, um, you know, in, in jail in Nigeria and all that. I really don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't care. They don't define me. You know, it's just for me to continue to do my job, you know, as a reporter. And that's the most important thing. You know, um, ethnicity, I hope, and tribalism, all those, you know, sentiments, I hope one day they will, you know, evolve beyond this situation. But right now, we just have to manage, you know, such things. So thanks, Femi, for, for asking that question. Um, but it's just, it's what it is. It's the reality, unfortunately. All right. Thank you. Um, let's go to Raf. 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 Okay. We, we skip. Hi, uh, thank you, Samuel, and uh, thank you, Rudolph, for bringing me here. Uh, greetings, Samuel. Appreciate your work that you've been doing, and yes, I understand the whole attacks, Nigerians, uh, well, not Nigerians, the, the supporters of the usuals. So, um, quick correction, uh, not quick correction, but just a slight thing I wanted to point out. Uh, the President of the United States has a press corps that goes with him everywhere he, he goes to, so even on the secret trip because you, you only mentioned one media that uh, went with him that was part of the press call so and i know some people will try to use that later on um, i'm so, sorry what did you what did you what did you mention i mentioned the wall street journal what's the journal yeah, him. but that was part of the press call that the the white house press call that the yes, yeah, it was, yes part of the white yeah. house press call. i said the pool i said the i said the yeah. press pool the white yeah. house press pool yeah yeah so, so she was that, representing, that, that, that ties she was representing the press pool, you know, she was yeah. representing the press pool, you know, and it yeah, was but, all just very... Just because you mentioned uh, the, 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 Wall, the Wall Street Journal, because you know how people take things literally, so I know that they're, they're just going to go with that. But that ties into the question that I have, that um, because we have the NUJ, the Union of Journalists, right, in Nigeria, uh, and with this story, the way people are reacting to the Supreme Court, uh, the CGN, do you think it would have made a difference if we had our own pool of, you know, uh, of uh, reporters that are like, you know, we have a group that's attached to the Supreme Court and attached to the presidency and like each governor has a pool. So that has to the transparency. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. I'm not going to say it's going to, you know, yeah. because we know the Nigerian system. We have to account for that until we get we eventually arrive at you know mm -hmm. promised land. But you understand where I'm going. Yeah, so yeah, I get your question. Do you think that yeah. will help? Uh, I, they've always had press pool. They've always had you know uh, um, governors. You know, um, even some senators. Have, you know, they have media team. Um, they, they, yes, there is official press uh, uh, pool. You know, battery of reporters attached to governors, attached to, uh, um, you know, the Supreme Court, attached to the press, the president, I was, I was 
from once a reporter from you know from the from the villa from the state house and following the president um, around. So um, really, it's just that it's it's it, it, it's it's almost useless. I mean, in our organization, for example, uh, People's Gazette, uh, we we don't <laughs> say that our we don't have any reporter. Our reporter, you know, covering the villa, you know, um, doesn't sit at the villa. You know, you only go there when it is important. Unfortunately, what they've turned the place to is not the same as where you have like the White House, in which they hold press briefing almost every day, every day of the week, you know, to ask questions of the day, you know, from the presidential spokesperson, you know, uh, the White House spokesperson. It's not the same in Nigeria. Um, they don't hold press briefings. Uh, what they do sometimes be if there's a uh, um, federal executive council meeting, on Wednesday, they will take a minister to go and you know interact with reporters, and then the person will just say whatever the person brings is what reporters will put out there, notwithstanding what actually transpired at the meeting. And then the president himself is as you know doesn't make himself available to reporters to be interviewed. Unlike you know where you always see from the White House, in which um, as uh, the president is getting down from his uh, Marine One, right, yeah. you will see question you will see questions being thrown at him you know, as he walks from Marine One into the West Wing or something. You know you will see questions being asked. Um, if he's going, if it's at joint base Andrews, reporters are the wait, you know, waiting for him before he steps onto the plane. They could always mm -hmm. throw questions at him. That's not the way it works in Nigeria, and that's so. You know, even though they, even though they have those reporters, um, if they are there, they won't talk to them. They won't relate with them. You know, it's on occasions, on very rare occasions. Probably, what I've done maybe three or four times for you know, over the past eighty years, in yes. which you return from a foreign trip and then allow the aviation correspondents, you know, mm -hmm. at the airport. To okay, bring them to the tarmac, to the tarmac, you know, so that they can ask one question. You know, and there could be questions that usually, you know, rather. Uh, look, the problem is that they have, they have. <laughs> why, is, why is Doctor laughing? Because, because I know the question. I know the question is always like, "How was your trip, sir? Um, <laughs> we're happy to see you come back. Are you healthy you know, now?" No, but, but yeah, I, no. I have to ask this type of question because there are many people who just assume. The media works in black and white, and yeah. they don't take into factor this type of situation. They, That's they, why no, 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 they, they have. They have. They have. But it's they have. They have. They have. They There is a. The, you know, the the, the 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 state house. When I when I covered the state house, I think we're about two hundred and twenty six. You know, from representing different media organizations. You know, um, covering the villa. Even though some of us we only go on location when there's something important, but you really have that. You know, you really have that. And um, Buari, Buari has not held any um, um, briefing with yeah. maybe a foreign leader, you know, um, side by side, you know, throwing questions, you know, in your wow, you know, and, and that's it. Maybe 2016 or something was the last one we held or something. So, so it's very rare. That's just the point I'm trying to make. It's very, Thank very you. Rare. Thank mm. you. But they could, they could have made it better. They could have made the reporters, you know, be relevant. You know, yeah. but they block them all the time. They don't give them information. So reporters are those at the state house. They don't give them information. And even when state house sources have information, they give to you know other organizations outside that they are not even inside there. You know, to report. And that's why you always see you know what our reporters were doing back then and what we are doing and you know premium times and all that. We don't need to be there, but we get the information more than those who are actually you know, yeah. sitting there warming yeah, on the chair every day. Yeah, all right. Appreciate yeah. your work. Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Berici, you're next. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, how are you, Mr. Ogundipe? Absolutely good. Uh, good you. to see you. Good to see you. I, 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 Thank you. I, I listened to you and I totally enjoyed your presentation. I actually, I'm actually very excited to have listened to you because uh, um, I think I was, it was even yesterday or so, I was talking to my friend, I'm like, each time I watch news in Nigeria by the mainstream media, I get completely frustrated. So I, I live here. I watch CNN. You know, where you see investigative journalism, right? People actually, journalists go in dig deep and reveal things to people. America has what it's called, CNN has what it's called K5. Okay, you know, where they go, they just, they, so anyway, anyway, so I, I don't have a question for you. Just have to say you are priceless perhaps one of the few endangered species that we have in Nigeria. I like what you do. If we could have somebody like you in across all the social, all the news media in Nigeria, Nigeria would be better for it. Um, yeah, because you need to hold these people to their feet, hold them accountable. 
they have a responsibility. They have they owe us enormous responsibility, especially in the area of transparency. So I sincerely thank you for what you do. And uh, and uh, I encourage you to keep doing it. Don't even be distracted by by you know uh, you know what people who are not as informed as others say about, <laughs> about, about what you do. Just keep doing it. Thank you very much. Mm. All right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Berichi. Uh, let's go to Sam. Sam, oh, you're next. Can you hear me, please? Good evening. Yeah. yeah. Um, good, after, well, good evening. Um, um, I'm Samuel as well. Uh, I'm from where you from as well, from Ogun State in Nigeria. And I'm not saying these are out to attack your person or your personality you do what you're doing every work is a work a hustle is a hustle but i'm totally disappointed because from all i've listened to in the last one and a half hour i joined this program this is reckless and irresponsible journalism why do i say so we all travel around the world the size of the qatari airport is different from the heathrow's airport the size of the airport in scotland might be different from wherever you don't expect a 70-something-year-old CJN, okay, to trek some up to 20 minutes distance, sometimes 15 minutes, and if they ask for a wheelchair to be pushed around, how does that mean that it was disguising? Because I listened to you carefully. We are all students of English. You said, is that not prejudice on your own part? Is it, are you trying to just cloud chase or you need the traffic to your website? Because I don't really understand what is going on here. And I'll tell you what I think. You guys are trying to draw out the CJN. So when the case gets to the court proper, okay, when this tribunal starts to see it, you will start telling and writing up your piece in Nigeria to say you don't believe in this man because it's from the same tribe, but Latinobo is from as well. So it should that is what you're playing to us and it's a disgrace i'm disappointed i'm not joking about this eight million people voted for this man uh, this is where all of this is going believe me six point two million people voted for peter ob seven point something million people voted for um article as much as they claim entitlement to nigeria you cannot overturn the vote of eight million people that voted for this man this is where you are going you and your paymasters are a disgrace whoever is sponsoring this is a disgrace as well this is a shame we want a military taking over that country what you're trying to set up is chaos and anarchy in nigeria and i'm saying this from the depth of my heart, please let us not overheat the policy. Let Nigeria live. It's going to get better. Maybe not in our generation, but then let's take this easy. Let's calm down. All the right. way we are going about these things is dangerous. And it's very, very dangerous. And it's very criminal what you are doing. When the DSS picks you up, I hope somebody is coming to rescue you. Thank you very much, Dr. Damages. Thank you, Sam. Um, Samo, you have any? <laughs> about him, he was making a statement, so he didn't ask any question. All right, uh, I can ask. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Damages. Um, my question is is really simple, right? Uh, I know people have come on here to say, Oh, he did a fantastic job, and all that. Point is, it's not the first time something similar has been shared, right? So, my question is, What is the point? What has it achieved? Okay. Uh, assuming, right, because you said, you like you rightfully said, you said it might be because of your reportage that the Chief Justice of Nigeria went back. So you're not sure if it was. Uh, you're not sure if the meeting was held. And today, I'm in the U.S., I mean, I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. I, I believe you're in the U.S. or in, in, in Europe. Um, Dr. Rudolph is in New York City, and we're meeting virtually, right? He could have, they could have met... Uh, virtually he could have met him he could have spoken to him through another person's phone intermediaries and all of that so i'm not questioning the propriety of your of your reporter but it, it does raise some issues about all, all of that right? but the point is nigeria over time has gone into uh tribal inputs and ethnic ethnic trenches this would not alleviate it this will not solve it this will deepen it because remember what uh ashwaji said he said yoruba local emi local so it's about yoruba and about him so and that's how this has played that one man went to more mark sam 
everybody who is you, but except the other gentleman who spoke with an accent, have basically condemned you the way they condemn uh, Rufai in channels. It is going to deepen the crisis. So the question is, what's the point? Because at the end of the day, it is not about the personality of Tinubu. If P2B won, probably I, I bet he will not do well because it's the structure. So my question is, what's the point? What's what did you achieve? What's the whole point? <laughs> oh well, um, I mean, thank you very much. I think your question is about the inspiration, right? Like <laughs> if ultimately this is what we're gonna get. But I mean, you know, it's it's a potent question. Um, the thing there is it's journalism. You know, it's journalism, and journalism is not um it's it's not it's not something that it's defined you know not as something that you know when people see they'll be very happy everybody will be happy no it's defined as where you're reporting something that somebody out there does not want you to report that's just the simple definition of what consists journalism so if the yoruba you know, they are very passionate about this situation. I mean, we've seen the cross section of those who spoke here. And if you try to measure um, those who have spoken on this forum um, and, you know, compare also, you know, try to align those who also spoke on social media, the, the, the backlash, you know, sort of, um, again, people's gazette on the social media, you would also see that it's coming from, you know, a specific section of the country. And that's not how we operate. You know, that's not how we operate. Um, the way we operate is that we look at the story, we look at the elements of the story, and we feel, look, do we have enough facts? Is the story in public interest? Is it factual? Can we stand by it? Can we defend it? Is it in public interest? Once we have been able to do that, we leave all the how people react, you know, the sentiment, how discouraging it might be. You know, they, I, I mean, at this point, people like the character that I just spoke now and, um, you know, others similar to that, they, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not going, they are the least, you know, of my concern as a reporter. You know, my primary concern as a reporter is to be able to achieve a kind of an open Nigeria, you know, a society that is open. If we have an open society and everybody is able to achieve, to rise to any, 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 any level in life, you know, to, to make things for themselves in life, you know, they won't see the position of CJN or, you know, they won't be subservient to think that, oh, you are in that position, you cannot be questioned. You are in that position, your security is more important than public interest, what the public must know, the public's right to know. You know, people will be thinking that way. So that's the concern. We get our information. We don't, you know, we are not, I mean, we are not bothered at all. The, the vitriol that I suffer personally, you know, it's quite enough. But thankfully, as long as my family is isolated, you know, from such vitriol, me personally, I am fine. And so uh, are my colleagues, you know, um, across the offices, they are very, very much um all bits about our journalism um we can defend our journalism anywhere you know um because we know that the best is for us to be beholden to the powers that be you know what we must do is to only be accountable to the nigerian people among those nigerian people are also those who are questioning who are criticizing you know but i've seen some of them here and i'm i've been very happy to respond to actual criticism, actual question, you know, bordering on our journalism. You know, it's, it's not something that we see every day. What we usually see, you know, is people who just say, oh, it's fake news. They have no capability. You know, and then people like, you know, the last character that just came, in which they will make all sorts of, they will say all sorts of uh, vitriolic, you know, um, their trial, you know, just for the sake of it, you know. But I understand their position. You know, I understand their position, uh, but the fact is that Bolatinubu is Bolatinubu. You know, Bolatinubu is somebody who has a reputation of drug dealing. There is no doubt about that. It is it is in black and white in the U.S. court document. So anybody who finds a drug dealer, you know, in the case in the in the in the in the, in the manner of Bolatinubu, 
you know, uh, as, a, as a leader, as somewhat of a mentor of, or somebody who works leading a nation, the person by all means should feel free to do so. If they are, we are all citizens, you know, but this is not my personal opinion. This is a matter that is in the public interest. This is a matter that is already in the public domain. So that is so, so people talking about, oh, how this story could be, you know, Bola Tinobu is no longer somebody that you can be talking about defaming, you know, because it doesn't have the reputation, you know, that could be defamed, you know, anywhere in the world. So that is just the fact. And, and I'm a reporter, but the fact is that I'm a citizen of Nigeria and as such, you know, I am entitled, you know, to say that this is our position on things. But then it has nothing to do with how we report it, you know, People have criticized us that, oh, we are APC propaganda. You know, it's all about somebody, you know, people were tweeting that all over the, you know, the place that we are APC propaganda, you know, athletes and all that, because they see some stories regularly that favor Tinubu and all that. What we just do is to report randomly on issues that are in public interest. So if that, if anything that we report favors Bola Tinubu, so be it. If it favors uh, Muhammad Buhari, so be it. If it is Peter Obi that is on the receiving end, so be it. So our own is just that we have information and we report that information to the Nigerian people. So notwithstanding the you know ethnic or tribal tribal uh, you know uh, uh, proclivities that we you know we, we continue to see in our country. All right, uh, Samuel. Thank you so much. Let me let me say before you go, uh, there were some questions on the comment section. I didn't get a chance. Oh, to. okay. But like, just two of them. Uh, I will paraphrase what they were trying to say. One was saying, are you uh, suggesting that the Chief Justice should not be part of any uh, judgment now that will get to the Supreme Court? Is that what you want? And uh, that's a question from somebody, I don't remember the name, it's been a while that I saw that. And there was another person who said, uh, are you, is there any way to, to uh, support or donate to your organization? So. Um. Okay, what was the first question again? The first one is whether you you are suggesting or you would like this Chief Justice of the Federation to rec recruit. Okay, oh, okay, okay, oh, oh, okay, any, okay. Any, any, uh, any... No, 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 I mean, um, the Chief Justice's action is highly suspect. What we are saying is that why did he do what he did? It's possible that he might be able to account other than trying, the fact that he's even using, trying to use media to manipulate the public shows that he's not entirely, you know, clean the way in the manner that he's handling this thing. He should have been more forthcoming, you know, say, look, I have nothing to hide. This is everything about my trip. Why is he not doing that? We reported this thing since Thursday. Today is Sunday. Supreme Court is using PR, paying media people. Do you know how bad that is to try to whitewash a serious issue? It's because something is hiding there. If there is an inquiry into this matter that clears the chief justice, so be it. We can't say that he should forcefully recuse himself. But if there is no inquiry, you know, and it still goes on to be part of, you know, the, 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 the panel, because he just, has, I mean, he's the chairman. So it's the chief justice and then the, you know, in succession, the, the next um, six persons, you know, to make up about a seven man panel for the, for the presidential um, election um, judgment, petition judgment. So if it goes on without clarifying what he had done, you know, that is London trip. If it goes on, if it just continues to use anonymous people to attack on social media or to, you know, use media, you know, pay, continue to pay, spend money on the media, to whitewash the situation without actually, you know, explaining, being, being, you know, accounting for his own movement to the Nigerian people. Then, then and then, you know, by the time the judgment comes and it's part of the, you know, whatever Nigerian, however Nigerian takes it, however Nigerian take it, is the way that you know it will be. If, if, if you know, so it depends on how it goes. So I'm not here to necessarily say that oh, he must recuse himself. No, Nigerians, that's left to Nigerians to, 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 to demand, you know, from him. What we are doing, because we just report the facts to the Nigerian people. We don't, you know, do advocacy against this and that. No, we just report. Then Nigerian people will use that information 
you know, to go and hold them to account. So to Chief Justice, in my opinion, in order to make himself more, uh, uh, you know, his position more tenable, you know, to the Nigerian people, he's supposed to clean himself, explain everything with facts, documents, backing everything, and then putting it to Nigeria so that people can say, okay, well, it seems like maybe after all, he could still be part of the panel, notwithstanding how the judgments goes. Because what matters most is that Nigerian people, no matter how the judgments go, you know, at the end of the day, are able to say that they have the confidence in the chief justice. Because what people, you can see the narrative from the other and um, Tinubu's people, you know, is that this is an attempt to put the Supreme Court in a situation in which the court will have no choice but to overturn the election, knowing well that the result, anything short of you know, overturning that election that brought Tinubu into office will be unacceptable to Nigerians. You know, that's what that's how they are translating our story. But we said we, we are not, we only preempted the meeting from holding, you know, not necessarily how the Supreme Court's judgments out to the election petition tribunal would go. But if they want Nigerians to believe, if the Supreme Court wants Nigerians to trust the judgments on this particular very serious matter of national presidential election petition, then the Chief Justice must come claim on what it did in London. That's one. As to the second question about donation, we appreciate people who have offered to donate to People's Gazette, you know, and the thing there is that we have not rolled out, you know, because we felt that we have only launched a year, two years, but people have been asking to donate to us from the get go, but we felt that let's still do more, you know, let's do more, because it's a very, very tough media environment. Independent media is extremely difficult to run in Nigeria. I will admit that. And the reason is because when you run a story that is highly critical of people in power, you know, people around them, you know, would then start being afraid to bring business, you know, because they will see that ah, you just run a story about somebody. And then because when they see the business, in the case of like the case of Lai Muhammad, the information minister saw a banner ad on their website and then called the person up. Ah, you are getting federal contracts and you are giving adverts to people's gazettes. So the, the business had to call us and say, look, we get the audience, the views, we appreciate business with you, but the government is not happy. The, you know, the minister of information is, is you know is threatening us about this matter. So therefore. We can do editorial partnership, you know, in a manner that it will be a banner on your website that people can see and then target also. It will just be like an editorial partner in which we can then pay you. You can, you know, you can use our material if anything comes, you know, from it. So in that manner, people do it just to show that, so that they don't run away entirely because they like our journalism. They want to continue to use their adverts to support our journalism because it's kuja. You know, but they are afraid they are being targeted by the government. So that happens. But we just said, let's wait for some time, you know, to do more work before we then start asking Nigerians for donation. So that way we can then say, look, see our bona fides. This is why you deserve, you know, your support in order for us to continue to run an independent journalism, fearless. Our Logo, our, I mean, I'm sorry, our slogan is truth, courage, or nothing. Is it that we are telling the truth courageously, or we are not even in the media business at all? We are not even in the journalism business at all. So if we can't do those things, those two things, we are out. We, are, we, should, we, should, just pack, we should just pack our business. So that's why it's seeming like, oh, we are, we are this. No, but we, you know, we, are, there's not, we are doing our own thing. Other outlets are doing their own thing. So for people saying that they want to support us, we appreciate you. We will receive support from you in future, but we have not rolled out the process, you know, the entire structural policy around accepting public donation at People's Gazette. Everything is still pending, but when we roll stuff, such things out, you know, such solicitation out, then we will put it, you know, in the public domain for the public to see. And then how we use anything that is donated to the our organization will be published every quarter or by annually for Nigerians to see the report of our expenditure so that they know where the money they donate to us, how it is being spent. You know, so that's how we do. So we are not too big, we are in fact, 
to be about the smallest in the country, you know. But Guardian in the UK is taking donation, you know, about 90 million pounds in, uh, in the previous, you know, in the pre previous year. And that's to tell you that this thing is not unique to us. If you come to the public that we want donation, it's because we actually need the donation. You know, we need the public support. We will roll it out, but it is not right now. But kindly watch out for when we will roll it out and we would appreciate how much, you know, however you want to donate to the organization. So we appreciate this question and that uh, we get these questions regularly. Okay. Thank, thank you so much for spending uh, over uh, three and a half hours with us. Um, we appreciate you and what you do, and we hope that you will come back um, in the future to um, join us. And and I that's what I like the way you you actually explain the workings of the media because I get that all the time. People don't actually understand, especially now that people consume media for free. Um, people don't pay for for media, and they don't seem to understand um, the cost involved. In you know, they will say things to me like. Why didn't this reporter go here? And they don't understand that if you want to fly a reporter from Lagos to a Bony state to cover something, how much it will cost? And yeah, and, it can know, be a very high. It can be a very high budget. I mean, we're looking at our books over the elections. You know, it was quite quite expensive. It was a lot of money. You know, but we had to do it. It's, it's just what has to be done. All right. Thank you so much for coming and uh, uh, keep keep doing the work you do. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for having me. It's a great pleasure to engage with your audience, and I hope we will do this again next yeah, time. Yeah, we will. We will. So when we come back, we will do a recap with uh, with our guests or uh, with our uh, audience members. The guests will leave us by then. So let's take a little break, and then we'll be right back. Network television debut. This is his most uh, recent album right here. It's called Spirit of Love. We're very pleased to welcome Majek Feshek. <laughs> around for too long, so long, so long, too long. 
Welcome back, everybody. Um, it's been an interesting day, and um, we want to spend uh, probably an hour to recap on um, what uh, happened, your impression, and everything else. So let me start with people who didn't get a chance to, to talk to Summer, and um, which it's not my fault. <laughs> uh, let me start with you, uh, Mr. J. James, I know that you came on. I know you came. I don't know what happened. But, uh, yeah, um, please, just kindly excuse me. OK, can you hear me, please? Yeah. Can you yeah. hear me? Good. Um, I decided to sign out because uh, the question I had in mind was answered. That's why. Oh, OK. Good. Now, I just want to make a statement before I leave. From what the gentleman has said, the narratives he gave is based upon a very difficult time in Nigeria. Uh, I remember the case of Emmanuel Noriega in Panama. I can't remember the year when the U.S. forces invaded the country because Pana, sorry, Noreka was involved in drug trafficking. I do not know how Nigerians will feel if we wake up one day to hear that the U.S. government or the British government or French government or Russian government invaded Nigeria and carry away or cut away the president of the republic. I do not know how we are going to feel. Because this issue of drug trafficking, there are a lot and lot of things that goes with it, which Ordinary people like you and me know absolutely nothing about. And the guy also made mention of something very important. These people going abroad for medical treatment, are they signing away the integrity of the country just for them to get well? For example, Buhari staying there for over uh, how many days? How, do we know if this guy has signed away some oil wells in the Niger Delta? Just for him to be rejuvenated, nobody knows. So we should brace up for a very, very hard time to come. I'm saying this because about a year ago, I said on a Symphony platform, Symphony TV online platform, that this election should be called off. The country should be properly organized before we conduct the election. But anyway, I was a voice in the wilderness. Thank you so much indeed, uh, Dr. Jamidis. I want to sign out again. I've been with you on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you, uh, James. Um, okay. Adewala, you're next. 
Good afternoon, Dr. Damages, nice. and everybody on the show. Well, thank you for bringing me in. Well, uh, I think that uh, uh, Samuel Ogundipe, uh, the uh, guy from People's Gazette, has done the job that a journalist is expected to do. Uh, I don't know why, uh, you know, people are hungry that, you know, a journalist is just doing his job, reporting uh, what they, they, they suspected to be a foul play. So, in my opinion, if uh, somebody like the CJN uh, would be traveling out of the country, it should be known to Nigerians, right? It's answerable to us. So the election is over, right? The, the election is over. The whether by hook or crook, they have given us a president-elect and he should be ready to subject himself uh, to public scrutiny. So you sneaked out of Nigeria. People, you know, journalists have the right to report about it. Uh, unfortunately for, for these people, uh, when Tinubu traveled, he didn't, nobody knew about it until Sahara Reporter broke the news. And then, uh, you know, few, I think a few hours later, I got a report from, I, got, I, wrote, I read a report from People's Gazette saying that the, the CJN also traveled. To, to London, London and France, you know, the, the Tinobu camp were claiming their, their man went to France. Uh, the CJN went to London, London and uh, France. I don't know how far apart the two, the two countries are. <laughs> so they are in Europe, right? And then somebody is saying that, oh, CJN didn't travel. And all of a sudden, we, 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 we read that the CJN uh, traveled on the 18th, and then he came back uh, on the 23rd. When they were already showing some video uh, on YouTube that uh, the, the CJM went to, to the mosque, you know, trying to present it as if this man never went anywhere. So it was when we started reading news from uh, Premium Times and People's Gazette and everything, and the, the spokesperson for the CJM began to reveal that their man went to London on the 18th, but came back on the 23rd. So I think there is so, something is suspicious, you know, that is a suspicious movement. And I think uh, Gudepe is right. Then I also want to have that somebody uh, during the show uh, was, was saying all sorts of things, trying to, uh, you know, castigate uh, Gudepe for, for, for doing the report. That he, was, he should be ashamed of himself. Is uh, you know that it doesn't. If Nigeria may not be good now, it may not be better in our lifetimes. But you know, if Nigeria will be good, and and the, the guy is living in the United States. You said you are living in the United States, and you are saying it doesn't matter if Nigeria is is in bad shape now. That it should continue to be a bad country. I think that is very disgraceful. The man has done his job. Uh, Tinubu, when he signed, when he signed up to 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 become a candidate in that election, and he knows the desire of becoming president, he also signed up to the fact that he was ready to subject himself to public scrutiny. So he should be ready for it. And we have been reading from Fire Nonuga, many of his uh, many of their friends that are very soon, very very soon, as soon as the president elect is sworn in. People should be ready to be to be taken by the DSS to be arrested and locked up. People posting things on YouTube on on Twitter, they should be ready for arrest. So I think the media, everybody needs to be aware of that. They are already threatening. We, we, we may be we may be we may be uh, in for something even worse than we experienced under Buhari. Everybody should be aware of that. But we should not be afraid. You know, this is their way. Uh, and, I, and I think, you know, people pushing that kind of narrative at this time should be ashamed of themselves, too. So the man has done his job. Kudos to him. I love the job they are doing. If they didn't have anything uh, in the whole thing, they would not, both of them would not travel at the same time. And the man would not be sneaking around in London and uh, disguising in a wheelchair. Thank you very much, Dr. Damages. All right. Thank you, Adewale. Uh, and we see Hello, Doctor. Happy Sunday to everyone. I I joined late. I just came back from mass, so 
by the time I joined, uh, you were, uh, I think the last two uh, panelists were asking questions. Mr. Ike and uh, one other person. Well, the journalist has done his job. We're in a critical period in Nigeria and every movement should be reported. Uh, even if they just saw him at the airport, it should be news because this is uh, a very, uh, um, this, this is an unusual period in Nigeria. We know how the election went and uh, the man I met declared um, the winner. We know his antecedents, the way he does his things behind closed doors here and there, secretly and all that. So like the last speaker said, we should be we should brace up for a more difficult time. I mean, like Adewale said, under if Supreme Court turns their eye the other way and allow him to to be president, because his men, they are they are specialists in spinning news. They are the shoe spinners of news under Buhari, trying to propaganda and lies are what they eat with. They know it very well, and they, though others know it, they, they are not the only ones that know it, but. What we know is that they will go all out to guard the press, to guard the Nigerian public, and to do things the way they like. They claim they are progressive and they are Democrats, but they say showing what they will do when they come in. You see that Mr. Bay Onanuga saying all he's saying. I'm disappointed. That man is one of those who people saw as those who fought uh, the Babangida regime. In fact, after News Watch went off the scene a little, news took over and they were telling us, giving us reports of things and he was one of the arrowheads. For him to come this time around and be uh, making all kinds of comments, even hate species and um, uh, even asking the the DSS to be a searchlight on those who they feel are opposing Tinubu and trying to spin the court, the, the, the court, oh, sorry, the Tribunal um, appeal, OB and Atiku, has taken their matter to as a ploy to annul the election. You can see the West is using annul, annul, as if they're yeah, try, trying to make it look, uh, look like June 12th. Those younger Nigerians who didn't, who didn't even know what happened during 1993, we think that, oh, they're trying to annul uh, uh, Tinubu's um, election. This is completely different. These are contestants who normally are not satisfied with the. Um, uh, the, the INEC uh, uh, ruling or INEC um, decision that Tinubu won, and they are going to court. Onanuga is coming to tell us it's, a, it's, a, it's an amendment that trying to stop his inauguration and all that. You can see what he's saying. And the DSS that they said should arrest Obi and his uh, running mate are keeping quiet. They did a lot of things, they are keeping quiet. So, that apart, what I feel is that more such light should be built not just on the Chief Justice, but other Supreme Court. And even the appeal court judges, uh, justices, let us know what they are what they are thinking, because this has gone this has gone beyond the level that everybody just sit at, sit on defense and see whatever they do to accept it like that. We should know what they are trying to. They, they should do the right thing. They they are feeling the pulse of Nigerians. They know where the people's mind are, and they should do the right thing. Anything beyond that, I I I don't know. Nigerians may not take it lightly this time. It's really really sad. But I, I pray that Ogunibe and his crew, his team, will continue to dig deep to really know if Tinubu and this man really met and uh, probably what they discuss. Uh, Doctor, to, to one more thing I want to add is that it's unfortunate that currently now in Nigeria, some sections of the press have taken sides. The press is no longer the press we used to know during the military rule. Some of them may be fear of being hunted down fear of being closed down or taking their, uh, their salary stopped and all that. Everybody is being cowed now. I'm urging all of them to come back to what they used to be, to be objective. doesn't matter who is involved. If it's OB, if you have any, anything on OB, they should say it out. If you have anything on article, they should say it out. If you have anything on Tinubu, they should say it out. Let us, Nigeria should be seen to grow beyond the, the level we are. We are now a laughing stock in the world. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ndubisi. Um, let me go to Austin. I'll come to the people who, who were here before. Uh, Austin, go ahead. Augustine. And I just had to tune in uh, and I saw I saw the VC talking, really. Maybe I just need to wait a little bit for some few minutes, then go with the flow. 
because oh. I, I wasn't here to 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 listen to uh, Adewale about the story that came up. So I'll just stay at the background. Maybe in the next two minutes, you can ask me. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mama Echo. At least I am vindicated, yo. Yes, he did. And I said, how did you know? He didn't want to carry Ghana must go. Go, 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 go. Somewhere, thank you for stopping the evil that would have happened. Help me to continue to touch lights. Touch lights. They're going to expose them. Now, the beginning of disgrace and shame. You people put shame and disgrace upon us with the work of Tif Tunubu and M. Soluomo. We've not cleaned that up. Baba went carry white wig for her. He won't come add your own journal. Abba. Una, there are you people are in for serious wahala. Now, now tell us when my children and myself we small. Una say the young shall grow. We can't grow. Una tell us when we small. You are the leaders of tomorrow. Try to pay our school fees. We can't don't grow. We won't assume leadership. Because we see say Una will be a cake people. Una leave us for 1960 and behind. And we can see say our mate is there for the 23 century. 2023 century. Una leave us for 1960 behind. We say make Una give us chance. Because me and my children, we know that we're smart, we're intelligent. If only on a give us chance, we know how we go wrong. Me 2023 in the global world, when I say no, we work hard. Tutu, I mean, boo boo, he come to uh, USA some years back. They ask a simple question Your youth population is growing. What is your plan for that? Now he open his brain because he don't memorize waiting people like Kuyamu be don't teach her. Now he open his mouth because they talk of climate change. Oh, Lord, don't know about one. Now since that day, now I tell myself, wake up, wake up. If your children must fulfill destiny, these people not get plan for us. Then, when I come say, okay, a lecture can reach. My children can say, for us not to be lazy youth, let us work. They look all the candidates finish. They can't pick the man when he say, I want to change Nigeria from consumption to production. Even though it was not my favorite, and I tell them for your face. I said, because my children, they support you and not get choice because I'm better than my mind too. He said, no, they give shishi. My sister said, oh, correct, sir. We like you the same. My children work so hard. Day and night, they go villages. The little when they get, they take and do hard work. It can't reach election day. They won't vote. Some people, when they call themselves senior PhD Agbero in Lagos, they can't pick some specific tribe of my children say if you be able you must not vote here president he can't come out because okay i like chairman he go reset in brain make it let fair election to take place now that time all who are mother will soon end up in okere prison he go open in mouth, they threaten those same tribe. Two do not comment. Someone go not comment. Then the useless policeman, when he call himself commissioner of police for Auguste, he go open in mouth, say, now play the play. The next day, which cry in the night, begins, come begin, they die during the day. They cause they make the keeper for inside. Let it be. 
Then the fire she can't even come. Don't they tell us, eh? Since you see when they burn her for mama womb, then I read him when they say the room was. So therefore, it is a normal thing. Fire she and one man, when they say he goes to school today, he can't learn the English language. Walk on. Because they would donate two dollars, two pounds. Come on, two pounds. Now I got the donate to my picking. Uh, doctor, damage it. For all the work when they work. If you if you if you submit the donate, why you not give us hundred pounds? Just in faith, be like that of a, a local. It all uh, you people who is not business as usual. You see this now day, it get hot for now. Huh? We go collect that. Because if we allow this drop car of call is to new book for rulers. Hey, all the drug barrel all over the world. They go go collect their position in Nigeria. You know, go agree. Enough is enough. This Thank you. Is a donkey. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mama H.O. Uh, Dr. Berichi, you're next. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was I was trying to unmute myself. Yeah, um, you know, um, you know, as as we as we make effort to um perfect our democracy, um, you know, one of the areas that ha also has to has to change uh, would be the the media. Especially in Nigeria, you know, and so that is where why I think uh, Mr. Gundipe, uh, Mr. Gundipe, and those who are like him really have their work cut out for for them. Um, they are playing in an environment where people are not really as informed, do not even understand how journalism work. I recall in two thousand and eight or two there was um, an issue between Obama. I think there was a, a political fury between over what uh, the way Obama characterized the treatment that was meted to one Harvard professor, a black professor, and so they had what they call a beer summit at the White House. I that was just shortly after I, I, I left Nigeria for my master's here in Canada. So, but what I found unbelievable and very very fascinating was that. For a number of days, the media in, in, in America, especially the CNN, was digging to find who paid for the flight ticket and the beer that these two, that Obama and, the, and the, this professor of, of, from Harvard drank when they had their summit at the, in the White House. As a Nigerian, I was wondering how, I mean, what, what a waste of time. Like, how, 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 how could this even be, be, be newsworthy? Uh, but so it, it took, me time, it took me time to understand that, you know, um, that um, little things we, 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 you know, we, you would ordinarily consider as 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 not being newsworthy could actually could actually lead to a newsworthy um, uh, story. So, and that is the level of accountability that the Western democracy has attained, and that is the kind of uh, accountability that we Nigeria must get to if we if we if we really want to have a country a democracy that actually works so what like i, I was telling I, was, as I said earlier when i when i watch nigerian news i am i'm wondering uh, maybe dr uh, Kumpo may might uh, might uh, uh, have an answer here i mean is it that the nigerian media do not really have enough money to to um to employ investigative journalists or or is it that the, the there is they don't have the, the, the manpower in that area in Nigeria is very, very poor. So they that's when you watch the news. Like I, I give you, a, I give you two examples. Like yesterday, a uh, couple of two days ago, I watched with cringe the, the argument that ensued between two Abga Abga national who two people who are claiming to be Abga national uh, uh, chairman or whatever. Right? The issue was. The interpretation of uh, a Supreme Court order that 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 uh, they had just obtained that merely corrected a slip in his previous judgment. So these two guys went 
at each other just over what was actually uh, what what the judge what the ruling really was and i'm like you know um uh, channel tv should have should have uh, a legal expert like no, normally in, in 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 when i watch cnn normally when this is when there's when there is a judgment like this you will see those legal guys those who are lawyers actually you know at least at least go through this document and and inform people it's not as opposed to just say oh yeah say what what, what, what i saw what i saw the cnn uh, the channel very guy was, very hold on hold on yes. i think you're talking about this let's see if we can watch it Jigawa as last chairman of the party. And when I was removed, my deputy took over and brought the candidate who was recognized by APOGA in the 2021 elections. All right, please go ahead, Chief. Uh, please, uh, I'm happy he's here. Mm -hmm. And he said it for the first time we are, we are meeting. I've never met him. Physically? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Me and Sally and Michi, when we said that, do you know what do you mean? I've never, never met him. We've met, your, like we've met I'm, one on one, my friend. Don't, don't, don't like call me your friend. I'm not your friend. Sorry. Now, let me, let me make a point. Ask him. He's here. Who witnessed your national convention in Owere? Are we here for that? I'm saying to you that. Answer the question. I'm saying man. to you that. Where my did I neck? Where my, where my, where my, stop pointing at me. No, no, no. Did I neck witness? Where my deputy? That's a simple question now. Did I neck witness your national convention? Where my deputy was recognized? Where my deputy was recognized? Who recognized him? I neck now. I gave him much. I not recognize anything. Did he want you? Was Umoji not the candidate? Was Umoji not the candidate? Gentlemen, let's let's take one after the other. So go ahead. He talked about his deputy. This man, who's deputy? Deputy. What happened was on a, on a June 15, 2021, some people gathered at the uh, Boating Hotel, at the key area, area 11, or, area 11, area 7, sorry. And they held a sham neck meeting. Aired live by, by uh, AIT, live. And I was watching, I said, ah. According to the Constitution of Hapga, Article 13, no national convention will hold without the national chairman giving the notice. Even the meetings of MWC, meetings of NEC, national convention, according to our Constitution, must be issued by the national chairman. Who issued the, 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 who issued the, the notice for the so-called NEC meeting that removed? Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it even got. I mean, he played. He played the, the the part you played is is even uh, the minor of of uh, of the Midas, uh, uh As far as that that encounter encounter encounter, I think that was a, a point where he took the, the because he was holding the the Supreme Court the uh, judgment is and he took it to him and it's like show me what show, look at the, this this is what was said and then there was back and forth and it was quite a, a scene to watch so so and so and then i was wondering so where in, in, in so two things basically there but that is the, the other one is not really the, my issue which is the uh, who, putting them together very close to each other was even was was one poor judgment uh as, as far as i can tell because it could have it could have led to something very very um very very ugly so but back to journalism and investigation so now so they went back and forth and at the end of the day Neither, neither the uh, the the channel's guy nor even the viewers actually understand what the what what the true what the true issue really really, really was, and then, so and then so that's what is it. So and now there's this election election just took place, and then the people have been talking about what transpired at, at different states, different states, and so now I've been I've been looking 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 for what I've been looking at look uh, watching news to see. Which which how which news media will even take time to go into the IREV, IREV, and at least on do, do do a bit of journalism to say this is what okay we have gone to River State. So when when this INA guys come appear before them, they will say it's not about what was said in the in the press or what somebody else said, what a, a labor man said. As a news media, as an organization, what have you found out? What have, what 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 I mean, at least you could have, you could actually have gone in and and and, and put a result. And 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 based on your, your, your own final as a news media, interrogate people that come before you. So 
It's always when, when they go. It's always so. I don't see that in the media. It's always when they when they come. This one will say it's online. Another person will say the media. The, the, the news organization does not have any any. The, 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 you know, you know they, they 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 have no interest in conducting their own uh, um, um, investigation. At least uh, to actually uh, educate the people who watch them. So so I I I. I was fascinated to, to have seen this young young guy and the, and the kind of work he does in that space, and I pray that there will be a lot more of uh, more of more of him in the uh, in uh, in the media landscape in Nigeria. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. So so let me say, uh, Austin, hold on. Let me say you were asking is the media not um, the media has no? You said do they not have enough money? They have no money, not enough. They don't have any money, zero. So the fact that you still have media in Nigeria, you should thank non-profit organizations, foundations that support the media in Nigeria. Without them, you won't have newspapers. Zero. Um, so for those who have not had time to study the Nigerian media, most of the media are owned by politicians. So that's not real professional media when a politician or friends of the politicians own the media. So it's difficult for people operating in that environment to actually do the work the way they should do it. And, and if you see what people are paid in the media, you'll be sorry, you'll be, you, you won't do it. Anybody you see in the media, they are doing public service. <laughs> nobody nobody who, is, who would do it, you know? So it's a long conversation. One day we're going to have that conversation here because people sometimes, uh, people sit down home and expect magic from the media and they don't pay for it. You know, they don't ask, why are you paying your staff? How are you covering the country? You know, you can see like during this election, there was not much coming out from the North. Why? Because the media, they don't have anybody. Think about whatever media you can think about in Nigeria, Guardian, Vanguard, Punch, they don't have everybody in every state capital. So how do they cover that region? It's tough. Uh, but people who consume media, especially people who don't pay, <laughs> these days nobody pays, I expect magic. How would they do it? Where would the money come from? So there's no money. They are underpaid. There is no money. It's public service. And, and whatever is wrong with Nigeria, it's also wrong with the media. You can't have a media that is isolated from the problems of the country. So... Anyway, um, let's go to Ibo Basics. <laughs> Dr. Damages, uh, you threw me a curveball, but nonetheless, um, a good name, I still believe, is better than gold and silver. When our guest today, Ogundipe, came online, he spoke eloquently. Um, if S.A. Ogundipe, the person who wrote our history books, and our geography books. If he was a bad person, um, I would have been throwing or casting aspersions at the Ogundipe of today. So I am enlightened and appreciative of the work that the gentleman has done. Having said that, yesterday I was having a conversation with uh, a friend or a colleague about investigative journalism. And the person was saying that there has not been much of investigative journalism since Delegewa. And I said to that person, no, that the work of David Hungarian really cut very, very deep. And that is why we have a cross session of discussion in the media today about uh, the man named uh, Alhaji Tunubu. Then when Samuel Ogundipe was talking, he talked about um, the, 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 the ability of we being able to know the location or the movement of our uh, statesmen. And I chime in to say that there are property of the state. And I was about to say something about what happens when a public figure comes out. And I said in 1998, at the University of London, Arthur Zeribe, he spoke at the stage. That was at the World Book Congress, 1998. After he finished speaking, he disappeared. I was in the midst, and I wondered, I looked around, I didn't see him come down. I realized that the man must have left the stage. 
I quickly left the scene, went to the streets of London, and I saw Tonzeribe walking down the street. And I came right by, tiptoed right by his side. And I said, one nakedu. He almost got his, yekujala. What am I trying to say? Is that while we are looking at this mirage, Chief Justice, travel, you know, travel. Let us look behind because there is something else always brewing. And I will bring in the quote of my good friend, uh, Ken O'Coria, the former Secretary General of Audible Congress. He says that every business decision has legal implications. So for every move and everything that someone is going to presented here today, I see a situation, one of the reasons why we write the way we write at Igbo Basics or Basics at Press. We write certain things and we write from the mind frame of we can write a story, and by that I mean the place where they write by the now your name where they write there. So we can tell a story, and the story we tell, it is only those who have committed the act that has been painted in the story that will come swinging. We didn't name them, we didn't name Oka for their but the Okafor who has stolen our world will come out and say, stop it, you are doing this, you are doing that. Um, let us brace up, and I challenge all of us and all Nigerians, more so to the journalists who are in Nigeria. It's a level of love. Nobody is paying these folks. They hardly find a way even to refill their pain. And that is one of the reasons why Publications in Nigeria has been owned by politicians like the previous, you can say, like Rudolf did here. From Champion newspaper, which is no more, uh, maybe it's still somewhere, but I don't know. The Concord newspaper, which was owned by Abiola, and I alluded here that Concord newspaper translated into Sun newspaper. So let us realize that it is our collective responsibility if you see something, say something. Otherwise, these folks who are hounding at us, who are harassing us, who are already casting aspersions at who is going to be locked up and who is not going to be locked up, who the hell are they? They are fellow Nigerians. I am saying to all of us, and for those who come out to this space, to come and try to pop down on anybody who is telling the truth. I saw my good friend, one man went to more. He came here and blabbered his own. And the other person who said he's a lawyer came here and blabbered his own. But what the hell do you guys think you are doing? If your hand is in the cookie jar, we can understand. But if we are to be transparent, we talk to the, the, Dr. Rudolph here, because the man is simply transparent. And that's why we associate ourselves here. So it should be a challenge. All well-meaning Nigerians, because if we don't get it right, I remember yesterday somebody was so ashamed of being a Nigerian because we are about to swear in somebody who has been, I mean, pointed as a drug baron. I walk out now, somebody, I say I'm a Nigerian, somebody will look at me. Are you one of them? Come on now, let us get serious. Why has America not openly gone and congratulated Mr. Tunubu or Al Haji Tunubu? It's for the sake of us. My children will look at me and say, Dad, what's going on in your country? No. Let us please join hands together, find a way to support the little ones who are doing journalism in Nigeria so that they will not be bought over. They are hungry. They are hungry. And that's why you find them not thank God for social media. Because social media has exposed a whole lot of things that the traditional media will not expose to us. If a lot of people there, former head of state, uh, uh, deputy head of state, can die at the age of 79. Who else will not die in that country? Let those people who are in the Tunubu camp stop. Let them stop threatening to lock up anybody or do anything. No, it's not our turn. We have to band together and call them out at every angle. Enough is enough. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Damages, for the job you are doing. Thank Keep you. it up, and we are behind you. Thank you. Uh, awesome.
No, uh, uh, greetings everyone. Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. The, the point is this, uh, I always say this, that uh, if, if there is a crime being committed, you maybe a, a, a terrorist attack. I always say that once there's a terrorist attack, you see the president of the United States or maybe this person will always condemn the attack. It doesn't mean that those who died will come back to life. It's just to make the attackers know that they were not supported. So sometimes you see people, somebody will always say, we talk, talk, and talk, and nothing happens. But the fact that you talk, those who are on the wrong side of the, of the river always know that you are not in support of such a thing. So talk is not that uh, bad. It makes the other person to know that this thing you are doing is not correct. And sometimes with time, they get to realize that what they are doing is not correct. I always believe in solutions. Sometimes I don't like always, we always talk on one thing over and over again. It is when wicked people get into office for them to hide what they are hiding. They now clamp down the media. You and I, as Emma, Dr. Damages have said it, the media is not funded. Or they always direct you on what to say and what not to say. And that is why when you write your script, you want to publish it. They'll say, show me, let me see what you have said. From what you have said, I'll know what to remove and what to add. So we always need to look at it. That's why we, we are talking of fighting for the right person to be on the seat. Because the right person does the right thing. He empowers the media, and the media tell the people what to do. One of the things you see I was so disappointed was when the National Orientation Agency, you know when these Naira notes, were, we had problems, uh, people were not even educated to know that a new Naira note is coming. And I saw the chairman of the National Orientation Agency telling the central bank that there was no publication. Who is supposed to do it? Are you not the leader of the National Orientation Agency to go and educate Nigeria and see this kind of thing that will be happening this time or we are doing this or doing that? So my point is, is this. We will always talk to say that uh, this is right, this is wrong, this is this and this is that. The more we say it, it's not because everything will change overnight, but with time, the more we can get the things which are not well done, the more people always want to do it well because everybody have always said they always want to look at we are good people we are nice people no they always want to say we are good and the more you tell them that this thing you are doing is bad then i think the more they will change from it so i really want to appreciate uh, that uh, people's gazette person who really brought this to the limelight when i saw that news i had to retweet these days we have our android phones we have the data we can always read from anywhere even though we will, we will not see the hard papers is it the punch and the rest will not see the hard papers, but at least we can read from their site and see what they do. We will try to read, and no matter how little we are, we have sometimes. I know there are times where sometimes we used to do some little contribution to them to encourage them as well. But the government, through purposeful leadership, can really change it if they do the right thing. Like elect the right person who does the right thing. If you have nothing to fear, you will surely, surely allow the media to say their mind. And to end up, I'll, as I as uh, Dr. Damage will always know how to say, please go to the comment section, like the video, and subscribe so that we can also encourage Dr. Damage. That's just the whole thing. Like and also, also, also to like, buy more super chat. Also, staff in Nigeria that, that are working with Dr. Damage, if you don't know, they need to be paid salary. Buy more super chat. Let us pay their salary this month without anything coming from Dr. Damage Paul. So I need more super chat. All right, all right. thank you. Thank you. Uh, Austin, and the other reason I just, I was told because I don't understand some of these things is that if we have enough people like the video, uh, YouTube will show it to other people. But the most important thing is when we bring a guest that, that, you know, shed light into certain things, we want more people to see it. It's not just the people who are watching it at this point, but also more people to see. And all it requires from you is to click like on, on YouTube. You know, um, I think anybody can do that, but that's just um, a recommendation. We can uh, force people to do it. <laughs> um, let me go to Prince. Prince, go ahead. Oh, thank you, uh, Dr. Damages. And uh, good day, everyone. It's uh, just a minute to two of here in California. Um, I just want to say thank you for bringing uh, somewhere on that you know, on board today. You know, I'm surprised at how 
most Nigerians to reason. And the you know the the painful thing about it is that some of these people have been in other climbs. Some of them, you know, are professionals. Like if I see the first person, which was uh, Ayo, he said he's uh, he's an attorney, and you kind of wonder the kind of things that comes out from their mouths. You know, are you like, if I'm in trouble, would this person really represent me in court? You know, the thing is, I love information. In my house, you could see about two or three television glued to the news. The only place, the only news I don't listen to, and I'm sorry to say that, is false news. I don't listen to false news. They are biased. You know, and it's nothing. It's because of the person who owns it, which is uh, Modoc, you know, uh, who is uh, here and there looking, chasing money all around, you know, from wherever he can get it. That notwithstanding, can we remember when Donald Trump went to uh, uh, McDonald's to buy burger and fries? Who broke the news? That is journalists, right? Now, could anybody have imagined that a whole president of America will leave the food at the White House and go all the way to McDonald's to buy whatever, probably a dollar meal that he bought, whichever way, whatever it is that he bought, and that he stated that he loves eating those things. That they brought it to our notice is not because they hate Donald Trump, but it's an information that is desirable that for us to, you know, that's why you see sometimes when people talk, when you have more information about them, you will say, this is the reason why this person is saying this. And this is the reason why this person is saying this. I've said it before, I don't know if it's this platform, I'm into psychology. You know, that's what I, that's what I practice, that's where I work. Now, for the fact that the People's Gazette brought the fact that the CJN went, you know, overseas, disguised himself, you know, in whichever way. Even somebody was saying, oh, you, what is the disguise about being in a wheelchair? And I looked at myself, I said, wow. Wow. Someone even said, oh, we all learn English. And you'll be like, how do these people raise it? You know, just like how our fingers are not equal, everybody, you know, their own understanding are not equal. They just understand it the way it is. My own personal contribution to this will be, if truth to be told, let the CJN recuse himself. He will not die. He will not die. If I were to be him, recuse myself, and let other people handle it. Because already, he's already, you know, kind of like complicit in the matter. Being the fact that one, he's friends with Tinubu, and anybody telling me, oh, do you know that probably the meeting was just about their friendship? That person would be, a, you know, um, oh, shut up, don't, don't use that word. That person must be in a, from another world. You know? Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Let me just, there's something you mentioned, I want to make it clear, you know, in a way, you know, you said that um, about, I think you were talking about Trump and buying uh, buying uh, fast food, and you said something like uh, that he left the food in the White House to buy something outside. Is it what you said? Yeah, the, 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 there's a point to be made there, because most people in Nigeria probably, they don't know this, that the president pays for his own food right at the White House. It's not like in Nigeria where they make a budget and they tell us feeding for the president and the vice, you know, anything they eat in the White House, the president will pay from his own pocket. So that's the extent that that um, serious countries have gone to and we are still a lot behind. And 
you would think that we we want to catch up, you know, because we want to be a top nation in in the world. But any attempt to make us um, raise the standard, some people want to bring us back by saying that, oh, we're just beginning. Um, anyway. Uh, let's There's one thing I wish to say, please. I don't know. Yeah. Can I say it? Go, go ahead. Now, I was, there was one new thing I learned about the judiciary here. Maybe you can correct me. One of my students didn't come to class. So the next day she came and told me that she went to court. So I had to look at her. So what you go do for court? I don't know about the judiciary. Go and meet the HOD. If he tells me to waive the, 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 the quizzes I gave that they didn't find. When I went, when he went to the HOD, I went and told my supervisor that uh, one of my students went to court, said to ask me to do what I don't know. She said it might be judicial duties. I asked, what is judicial duties? That was when I learned that those in the United States have been mandated, those who are citizens and residents, to come to court to listen to the judgment that after the two councils talk, then those who came to court will be asked what they think about the judgment. Then the judge will now finally give the final verdict. So it seems as if they want the, the, ju the judgment to have a human face. So when I, I heard about that, I said, wow, this is beautiful. So that means this lady, I thought she committed a crime and went to court. That was why I didn't want to just listen to the whole thing. But when I saw this method, I said, this is a nice method. The question now, you know, I always say, how do we implement this in Nigeria? The, the, the point that came to me, if you bring it in Nigeria, they will still abuse them. You go always find your own friends who will, be the, who will be the ones to be called. Now I ask the question, how are these people selected? They said they are selected randomly. You don't even randomly, know. yes. You yes. That. You, but yes. in Nigeria, we will, we will if I say because I ask myself, can we implement this in Nigeria? They will always try to corrupt the algorithm to always select specific people who will set criminals free. That is just one thing that came from. But on the normal day, I thought that method was really nice in such a way that people can tell you what they think about this case. You may have somebody who is we know is guilty, but you see the circumstances surrounding his crime. You said, okay, rather than me to give you 10 lashes of the cane, I'll give you one. That you should not do this kind of thing, but the circumstances had to compel you to have behaved that way. So it was a nice innovation, but mentality for Nigerians, no, they were. Doc, let me say something. different from jury duty. Yeah, yeah, he's Doc, talking about jury duty. Hold on, hold on, let's see. I'm my H.O. Go ahead. Yeah, you see, the very first time I was opportune to sit on a jury duty here, it makes me to see how backward we are really in. A situation where the, the lawyers from both parties will not just present the case to the judge, but present it to the jury that is selected randomly and give the reason why they are speaking for their clients. And the jury, the jury decision is what form the basis of which the judge will make his pronouncement. Now I say we must carry this thing to Nigeria. Not be only half democracy we go collect from here. They will go collect small from uh, UK. Then when they go first talk, America, this is a, but the real cocoa that makes America to be great, we are not ready to practice it at all. Now the one when he favor our corrupt practice, now we go carry poo for hair. Like person when carry shift and teach title for hair. You see, me and my children, when I deploy a joker card, we get the correct or don't get to play this time. We are taking over. Make we go relax. Because if I thought we even say make we learn from history from now, we now not put anything for done reasonable for me and my children to carry on. So everyone I don't practice for Nigeria, we go wrap and put for inside those be. We go come grand and share them throw away. Then we go start a better Nigeria for herself and for our children, children. You see, this unity is ending in this one. 
We now get our my children to contact with you, and we are ready for the fight. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let's uh, we we have to round up uh, in a short while. We don't have uh, the whole day today uh, unless I get a help, any help from somebody. Uh, Bas, uh, go ahead. Uh, unmute yourself, please. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. I, I, this is like my first time of actually uh, coming to this place. Yeah. Nice to see you. And I've, yeah, I've actually listened to some, most of your broadcasts. And, yeah, but I, I've been listening especially to what Mr. Sam said today. And I think the major problem we're having is that public servants refuse to be accountable to the people. And the problem with that is that your salary, your welfare, everything is actually paid by these same people that you don't want to be accounted are accountable to. And that is a very big problem in that kind of society whereby you have been selected or allowed to hold a position of high esteem where you have been placed such that people will, will look up to you for maybe, um, how I put it, for you to be for, for a level of integrity. And then you act in a manner that people would, that is questionable. And you expect people that pay for that um, same position not to question it. He's like, I see, I, I don't understand why people think like that. For instance, Somebody have asked, oh, why did they publish this in Ireland? For instance, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ruford, if you have a case in court and you, for one reason or the other, have information that the same judge that is going to judge that case is meeting the opposition or something, how will you feel? Will you trust that court or will you, will you trust that case is going to be judged in in a manner that will be fair. Of course, you have doubts, and that's the case of this same issue. You have you, just the, the 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 way it looks, the way a manner um, you traveling or even just knowing that you want to have a meeting enough has caused doubt already. And you expect people to just look the other way and not want to ask questions. That's, that's not fair. And we have to, as a society, to decide whether we want to hold these people accountable or we just want to have this banana republic where people can do as they wish. And we just let it be. I'm in a country, I'm in a country whereby every public, um, I mean, UK for it, and in a country whereby even the prime minister violated a rule that he set, and he was actually fine. So I'm saying that at what point do we hold these people responsible? At what point do we decide, okay, my child will grow up in a country whereby he feels safe, or he feels that he's, he's, he can say things and he will be defended? How can I go to a court and knowing that the other oppos opposition is in the mid? All right, I think Bas just um, his his uh, computer is frozen. Let's go to Mark. Mark, and then I'll come to Labode. No. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, this session is like just a roundup, isn't it? Roundup. Yeah, roundup. Yeah, yeah. yeah rounding up. Yeah. So I wanted to add that uh, I don't have any concrete conclusion as to, or whether maybe the conclusion is still in the pipeline. They haven't found it yet. As, as whether the meeting transpired or not, and whether it was bribery. I don't have any conclusion yet. Okay. All right, Mark, thank you. That's, that's, that's good. Um, Bas, you want to finish up your, your thought before we go? Yes, like I said, I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, um, Mr. Rudolph, just tell me, how, at what point do we, as a country, decide we want the rule of law to be rule of law? And that's, that's it, because we can't keep living like this. 
We can't Thank keep you. doing this to ourselves. This, Thank this, you. This, this is my personal opinion. Okay, we are we are we are building a critical mass. This is what we do here. A lot of people are watching this. A lot of people who probably will not have thought about things this way, the way you are saying it. Maybe they will be they will come to your side and and buy that viewpoint. And when we have that critical mass, maybe there will be change at home. You know, I don't know, but that's that's what we hope for. And, and the fact that more people are leaving the country, they are experiencing another structure, different structure, and they are beginning to say, why is it functioning here, but it's not functioning where we come from? And they may come to the same conclusion and then action will follow. I'll lab about it, you're next. Yeah, good evening, my brothers and sisters. I believe we, we are hearing each other. Yeah. Yeah, um, Alaba Deluda is my name. I live in in the Europe, actually, and presently in France. And uh, I just came back from Wait, Nigeria. You are in uh, France? Yeah, presently in France. Can you go to the airport and... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm two hours away from the airport. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, a brief one, a quick one. Um, I just came back from Nigeria about less than three weeks now. I make sure I voted before leaving. Uh, my own conclusion, or let me brief what the other, uh, the media guy was has been saying the other time. Uh, for CNJ to disguise, that shows the man has something in his in his cupboard. He has skeleton in his cupboard. Anyway, uh, we are we we have a country. I've been in this country for almost thirty years now. Even I'm older than the president of France, Emmanuel Macron. He's just 40 years old. He came into power from 30, at 39 years. The president, I mean, the prime minister in Finland, this lady is 35. So what is happening that we can't entrust our economy, our country to a young man? Several, I spent almost four months before coming back. I left since last year. This wala of uh, petrol, and using Naira to buy Naira, I experienced this. I experienced this, this nonsense that even on my way coming back to pay my excess luggage, I wanted to pay the lady Euro. The lady said, no, she preferred Naira. I say, hey, no be small matter. Sir, I traveled, just, eh, sir, I'm sorry to bother you with too much no, story. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I traveled from Ibadan to Shaki. It's less than three hours journey. I spent 50,000 Naira to fuel my car, sir. Sir, then I was coming back. Let me just, because I have small fuel inside my car. So on our way going to Shaki, we bought 20,000 Naira. So getting to Shaki, coming back to Ibadan, after about when we finish all our Faji like that, we, we just a little bit away from me saying, fuel turn red. We have to fuel the tank again. We go on petrol station. The guy say no. We know they collect a uh, card. They they want cash. We don't get cash. Cash until finally go come help us. We see one station. We give them card. They say yes. We go collect. I say put thirty thousand naira. The girl and the other guy was looking at us. And say yeah, oh God, we are not uh, putting fuel in the jerry can. We are not putting fuel. In. I say they sell. They go now. Brrr, bara thirty thousand inside fuel. That is. A day journey from Ibado to Shaki, I spent 50,000 Naira. How many people can afford it, sir? Everybody was looking at each other's face. Anyway, don't let me bother you too much. I spent all this while I do too much. I'm a Yoruba man with my name, you can see. I do a lot of Faji, NUJ in Ibado. We go to recreational. Anytime I stood up to, to talk, they will say, ah, uh, this Yore man, Narabu Raza man, Narabu Raza man. They say, now only you from diaspora, one sure uh, is too radical, is too this, is too that. At the end of the day, when you ask them what is the crime of Sunday Bobo, where she they no feel no who can kill people for a house, they go keep quiet. What is the crime of Kanu where they go carry him from uh Z Kenya or where to lock her up after the court some say me deliver? Don't at the end of the day, they will just stand up. They say ah, this place is a faggy place, it's not political ground. I'll just keep my mouth shut carry my key, waka go. You know, look at this. From nowhere, they go bring Obi to camouflage. Now camouflage PDP man. At the end of the day, look at Shore. Well, Shore is not my biological brother, 
But I've been following Shore right when I finished my secondary school. Shore was even staturally I'm taller than Shore at that time when he, he was the uh, university uh, president of student union or whatever in uh, Unilag. I saw this man. That's the thing that draw me to him. Since then, anywhere I hear Shore, I will see what thing they do or what is he reading, or what he saying. This is a man that has put his life on a pipeline for more than 20, 30 years now. And he's been fighting. This man is not tribalistic. If you talk, say, Shore had no correct. If you get problem, he goes still stand behind you. If you say he get correct, if you get wala, he goes still fight for you. He has, his brother is, has lost his brother in this fight. He has lost everything. They blow his nose. They shot him in the leg. All of us see him. They locked this guy off for no reason. They go carry him with pajamas. All of us see him for for hotel. The man did for pajamas. He they sleep. JJ, assuming woman did there now, so they go expose him. Say maybe they carry in trousers. They go down. He won't do the two women they do. Now so they go go him. Person will not get jackknife. They carry gun. Go with him like say now Osama bin Laden. They won't go carry. At the end of the day, they don't get a reason to carry this man. And this man said, nobody, they, they can't take Obi camouflage. All our youths, they can't swim behind Obi. Me, and I, when I tell them, I said, nah, camouflage PDP, my video. Obi, Obi will not get God to go show himself for an umbrella where he stay for eight years. Well, all the way, all the same, my conclusion be say, this our so called youth, the, the average people, we don't get. Most of the major problem we are seeing, apart from religion, is the average one. We don't, we got don't bless more. We don't build three bedroom bungalow. Has more car like all those their common car, Toyota Camry or Toyota Corolla. Or they don't get thing to reason again. All what they want say na APC na Tinubu. Somebody that cannot stand on his two feet. Now now won't put time for to be president when a country like France they use Emmanuel Macron. Or Finland, they carry a gay lady of 30 something years. With the, so a young man come out and uh, say he's too radical, he's too stubborn, he's too this. So, what do we really want? Somebody say, Let us go. I want to become Biafra, I want to become Yoruba. They go kill person for your house, they go poem for Kenya. Somebody say, Okay, come, let us come together as one country, but we need a better country. They, they use DHS, uh, DSS, they chase them up and down. So, what exactly do we need? It's like Nigeria, we are we like just like uh, area father they talk. Uh, Charlie boy say our mumu never reach if the suffer reach proper. I think say things go they correct, but we are not suffering because using naira to buy naira, my brother, I beg. That's my own brief uh, conclusion. So we have not really ready. That's thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody that joined us. Oh, there's somebody else who's here. Um, <laughs> I was going to round up, but um, for for um, for old time's sake, Jude, welcome to the show. Hello, people. How are you? How's everybody doing? Good. So, Jude, we're rounding up. I don't know if you watched our our conversation with Samuel Gundibe. Um, people's guys. Uh, with Samuel Gundibe. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't watch that. Okay. Okay, say hello to people and then we, we the mass is about to finish. Oh, the mass. <laughs> well, I didn't want that. Well, what I wanted to say is um, uh, still regarding on our country and what is going on. And, uh, you know, especially our, our we, most of us here, I believe almost all of us, if not uh, most of us are our parents and those who are hearing us every day, their parents. Please, I, I enjoy every of our parents. Please, wherever you are, train your children well, please. All these Agberus now that are leading us, they all came from homes. When they were growing, their parents, they did so many things that their parents overlooked. And now they have all grown to be tormenting, not only their parents, but their families and the whole country at large. Okay, they say charity begins at home. Okay, the, any broken society today, is traceable to homes in that society. We should do better. We should not leave our children and say, oh, it's a child, let him continue in a bad behavior. Oh, it's a child, don't discipline him. Oh, leave him, it's a little child. He, will, he doesn't know anything. By the time they continue to grow and have that form, and form that bad habits at that early stage, you know, psychologically, you know, children go through different stages of development. 
And once they have imbibed, once they go through that early childhood without any correction and they're allowed to stray, to do whatever they like, there is no way you can change it when they have grown to become um, adolescent and then um, adult and so on, okay? Tunumbu Kiyamu, uh, Tunumbu, Tunumbu had a father. Kiyamu had a father. All these people that are considered news and that have become tons on our flesh today, they all had parents. They grew from home. They didn't start this thing today from uh, from uh, from home. Obi, we are all following today. He came from a family. I believe this training, the way he is today, was as a result of family background, the way he was brought up. Most of us today, Rufus, that is even here, that is always giving us the opportunity to talk. I believe he is here the way he is today is because of the family, the kind of upbringing the family, the parents gave to him. And you and I that are here today, the same thing applies. So all this Agbero, like they say, even fools grow old. Okay? When when people come and call these people fools, idiots, people will begin to be angry, but they, they have forgotten that fools grow old. These are fools that are that started from their homes, that their parents refused to give. Up, uh, good up, um, upbringing, and now they have become a ton on our flesh. So please, I enjoy every parents. Start, continue to train your child right from the time you gave birth to him. Continue to direct him to to the things of God to have good va virtues and good values. That All is right. the way we are going to build a better and a stronger society. All right, Th thank, thank, you. You. thank you, Jude. Let me let me play this uh, because Jude Jude prompted me to remember this video. Um, all right, I hope he plays. Rigging, I neck, rigging, I neck, ruling party. In a main work. I nakuzuma and Yoshin and Our children are taught to teach, cheat from the nursery school. If you are in a primary school, teachers need any her exam. Get school in 100 percent. In a primary schools, some primary schools, including in Cas Nobo, can we? And children are taught as kids that it you sh can't be, you shouldn't be honest. All you need is to get what you want. A JZ in a secondary school or current job, parents pull their children from where they should make efforts to pass exams and take them to schools where they will get excellent results for subjects they know nothing about. Commissioner for Education. No, where? Tenta. Our schools are 200 SS2. Manoru Hene SS3. Hega Hortati. Makane parents are pulling those objects in the miracle centers. Oru on a jamb, sorting and no sorting. Under a day, Nelenon does a jamb. A jiru sorting, jiru buying results, jiru body and money. Make they graduate, eh? Mban on a school, a rig student union election. Professors, we rig faculty election and departmental elections. Abia Nenguru, you rig chieftaincy election, traditional ruler election, town union election. You rig all of them. Abia ne parish council, ne parish ya, you rig CWO election, Sion election, CMO election, and some of us priests and sometimes bishops will want to impose their prefer preferred candidates on the people and everything. Rigging, 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 rigging. Abia Zeogu election. In the university, people who never matriculated graduate from universities. And professors who collect money from students or other uh, uh, bodily inducements for them to pass exams or for them to supervise their projects, and then suddenly, Boshe election, all of us who have been cheating from birth will begin to discover they need the return. All right, um, we have to end it there. I, I just, I just, Jude just uh, made me remember this video. I wanted to play it, and he was essentially because that's a very wonderful one. I, uh, he was essentially saying that uh, people, uh, we're all responsible for the society that we we live in or we've um, created. There was something that Peter B used to say uh, that the society that we abuse today will take its revenge on our children.
Um, sometimes we think we can isolate ourselves from that. We cannot. Um, but we have to stop it here. I have to go. And what do you want to say? Uh, sorry, I just take news this morning. Uh, former number two, Oladipo Dia, died this morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is, uh, okay. We started the show on, on that. I, I, okay. I talked okay. to Samuel about that. Yeah. But um, I, I want to thank everybody that joined us today, especially those watching at home. We appreciate all of you, those in the studio, those that participated, and our guest, Samuel. Uh, we appreciate the work you are doing. I hope you join us again next week, and uh, we, we, are, we are going to get a new guest, a very interesting guest to join us. I have not confirmed it, so I can't announce any, anybody yet. But thank you all for joining. Mama Echo, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Berichi, thank you so much. Lubisi, thank you. Igbo Basics, thank you. Austin, thank you. Uh, Labode, thank you so much. And I will see you guys on Saturday. Uh, take care. Continue with the good job you're doing, uh, Dr. Cook.